Hello everyone. Good morning. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with another episode and I guess the final dying live stream of our Chemnitz Dialong Sock Flake Special 2. <laughs> In all of these live streams, we have been dyeing sock blanks, a combination of commercially purchased sock blanks from Knit Picks and ones that I wound myself on some hand crank knitting machines. I even used some crochet blanks that I made by hand. And so today, we are going to focus on some speckling and sprinkling. Spr bleh. Today, we're going to focus on some speckling techniques using a variety of dry food coloring sources, um, hand painting little dots, and even using some sprinkles, which is one of my favorite ways to achieve speckles, bright specks of color on yarn. So good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome to, to the stream. Now, the weather outside is really, really rough. It's very rainy and windy. So there's a chance that a tree in the neighborhood could cut my power or cut my internet. So if things black out, I'll try to get on my phone to like update you guys, um, whether or not it is a like technical computer issue or if, and I'll be back, or if it's a weather issue and the stream's interrupted for a further date. But hopefully that won't happen and we will be able to proceed. But if you are new to the channel, um, I dye, when I'm doing these soft leg dyeing videos, I am dyeing a pre-knit piece of fabric. And so it is knit with the intention that you will dye it and unravel it. And so this allows us to do some really amazing gradients, asymmetric gradients of color, um, you can always dye it a, a solid color, and then when you unravel it, you get some like really subtle tonal variations or, based on the technique, more extreme tonal variations based on the actual way the knit stitches lie and how you apply the dye to the fabric. So it gives you a lot more possibilities than when yarn is in a skein form, and it is really, really, really fun to play with. And so I, this week I've been doing, showing a lot of examples of different ways that you can dye these blanks. Now today, do I have any single stranded blanks I'm using today? Oh, I don't think so. I think all the ones that I'm planning to use today are double stranded blanks. So a single stranded blank would be if you used one strand, one strand of yarn through the entire blank. But the double stranded blank um, is when you have two strands of yarn knit or crocheted together so that way when you unravel it, you can end up with two identical skeins of yarn. So in all of the yarns today that I'm gonna dye, everything is 100 grams. So then when we unravel it, we'll get two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn, which uh, you know is perfect for making a symmetrical project, two identical things like socks or toys or whatever it is you want to do. But this is you know a way to get a perfect matched set versus, you know, if you were going to dip dye two skeins of yarn side by side, you could get them pretty close, but they wouldn't be exact. And you wouldn't end up with identical socks if you're going to knit from both of them. But with this technique, you, even if you add a random one single dot, it'll be at the same place on the skein in both yarns. So uh, it's something that is really, really fun. Do you have some rainbow sprinkles that are like 10 years old? Do you think that they'll still dye yarn? Um, potentially, yeah. Um, do they still look colorful? Uh, I think that I might be, if you're concerned, you could always take like a little snip of yarn, even, you know, a couple inches, uh, put some, um, soak it in some vinegar, put it in like a zip, put it in a Ziploc bag with some of those, a couple of the sprinkles and microwave it and see how, how it takes up the color. Now, I found that with sprinkles, you get much more defined specks if you're using a super wash yarn versus a untreated 100% wool yarn. We've been talking about how some other fiber types absorb dye slower, so I would expect that fibers like alpaca and maybe silk might also, since they absorb the food coloring slower, you might not get as discrete specks. Um, but I don't think I have any of those pre-soaking right now. Um, but 
Yeah, and I think that I'm, I'm excited to use the sprinkles. I want to use some dry Kool-Aid. And you can see up above me, there's also some dry, some powdered food coloring that I'm not 100% sure it will use, but it's something that is an option, especially if you don't. Now, the benefit of Kool-Aid is that it has citric acid in it, but you could always mix, make your own mixture of citric acid with one, a powdered food coloring if you can't get Kool-Aid. So that way you can sort of get a similar kind of result as I will get with the uh, with the Kool-Aid. Because I'm hoping to do a low immersion sort of technique, but I haven't decided if I'm going to try to transfer us to my stovetop or if I'm going to pour boiling water in a pan and have that be enough heat to dye it. So yeah, that that's sort of my my plan for the day as we we play around with all, all of this. Um, there are so I'm using a bunch of a bunch of different products. Um, some of the dyes that I have pre-mixed are from the Wilton Colorite system, which I just saw has a two dollar off coupon on Amazon right now. So I think it brings it down from like seventeen dollars and forty something cents. Um, it would be an additional two dollars off of that, which isn't a bad price. Um, so there's a link to that in the video description as well. The Almost all of the bear yarns that I'm using today are from Knit Picks, both in the commercial stroll blank uh, that I'll be one of, I'll be starting off with one, but also the other yarn bases are from Knit Picks, except for one if I get to it and I have one yarn base that's from Wool to Die For. Um, I'm not a Wool to Die For affiliate, but um, I bought a sample pack of some of their yarns a while ago, and so I made a double stranded blank out of one of their yarns that I'm excited to play with. Uh, so other ways because. You know, people ask, how can you support me and support the channel? There's a few ways you can do that. Um, one is if you want to buy one of the products I've mentioned, if you go through one of my links, then I get credit for the sale. Um, on my website, chemnitz.com, you can find some of the patterns that I've designed that I sell. And so purchasing the patterns is a way to support me directly. Um, as always, liking, commenting, interacting on my videos, subscribing to the Chemnitz Tutorials channel, is a big, big way to support me. Sharing the videos, um, all that really, really helps. But something else that you can do is if you look at the bottom of your chat window, um, you can, um, you'll see a little dollar sign. And so if you click on that, you can do something called a super chat, which is a way to contribute directly to me without having to leave the YouTube interface and so it's kind of like, I guess, a little tip jar. So if you're enjoying what you're seeing and you feel like contributing to the materials for future videos, that's something that you can do. Um, would a tea ball work to distribute powdered Kool-Aid? Uh, probably, I have. So what you can see, I guess, right here is one of them is a tea, like a tea strainer for tea leaves. Um, so yeah, I guess it's a tea ball. Um, and I use that to sort of tap when I did, I think it was Dye Pot Weekly number one, when I was doing the speckling with dry Kool-Aid, I used that to apply the, the Kool-Aid in sort of like a, um, a diffuse manner. Um, I also have, someone sent me a really nice present. It's this, let me grab it, this spoon. It's this really cool spoon, which of course I didn't link to because I forgot. So it's an OXO Good Grips Baker's Dusting Wand. And so it's this little, it's sort of like a tea ball, but one side has no holes. And so then you can fill it up, turn it over, and then you can dust with it. So unlike filling the, the tea ball um, that where like things would fall out right away, this would have more control. So you wouldn't lose some of your dust until you're ready to use it. Um, I think, I think my affiliate Amazon affiliate links might only be US. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Um, but this, this is a cool, cool thing. And thank you, thank you. You know who you are. Um, I hope to use this today. Um, so that was a fun little present that I got one day. And yeah, all right. Um, oh, <laughs> but the way I'm gonna start I'm not starting off with a dry Kool-Aid. I'm not starting off with the sprinkles quite yet, even though I plan and hope to use both of those at some point today. What I plan to start off with was one of my possibly favorite yarns ever. 
But this is something I did in scheme form, not in a soft blank. So I'm sure that you might be familiar with this yarn. This is a yarn that I speckled using Wilton's Violet Food Coloring, and I used a fork. And the thing about this that was so, so cool, I used, I did dilute the food coloring a bit, and I don't think the colors will really come through here, but you see breaking within these specks. So you see the magenta center and the bright, bright blue, all from one color of food coloring. So I want to sort of use a variant of this technique um, and use a little paintbrush and sort of paint onto a blank that has been pre-soaked with vinegar, um, four different colors of the Wilton icing color. Um, so that way maybe we'll see a gradient, so we can get a gradient of specks. Um, and this is something that I'll be doing on a white background, but you could um, over dye your blank first in something pale before doing the specks. So that way um, you want to get white in between. But I think that this is going to be something that will be really, really pretty and really cool. Yeah, no, this is one of my favorite, favorite yarns ever. And I've been wanting to do a gradient of specks on just a skein of yarn. But then with the soft blank special, I was like, ooh, I should do this. I'm actually going to do this technique on two blanks. One of them will be one of the commercials knit picks, Stroll Fingering Weight Blanks, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. There's a link to that in the description. And then the other one is a homemade double-stranded knit picks Wool of the Andes Blank, which is just 100% Peruvian Highland Wool, non-Superwash. Both of these blanks are double-stranded. Um, I made the Wool of the Andes Blank on a Singer knitting machine, so it's thin and short, but I, it was a little hard for the machine to handle. It was really forcing the gears and was sort of frustrating to make. Like I was, I was very frustrated during the process of it. So I don't really recommend using the knitting machines for that. However, I think that the blanks that you make from it might be cool enough that it could be worth the risk. Um, so, oh no, did the video stop? I'm still here. Um, let me see. No, I think if, if the video paused, it could be an issue on your end. Try restarting the browser. Um, I think things are still working here. Um, so yeah, let, let me, let me know, uh, how things are going and we will see and get started. Um, but yes, if, if you're having trouble, let's just re refresh your browser. Um, but yeah, let's stand up and get going. Oops. Oh good, I'm glad you guys are still here. Um, it's always a concern because it could conceivably, I could see myself in my streaming software and not be streaming anywhere. So I'm gonna move everything side to where it can stay dry but so this is the the dry food coloring that I have I've never actually used it before um, but it is an option for today I have a bunch of these sugar sprinkles which I don't think would do much if I were to use them in low immersion um, because I think they would dissolve really quickly but they give really really discreet specs on superwash yarn uh, the, the specs that you get from them is a lot, um, you get more modeled pastels if you use them on uh, non-superwash yarns. I also have these like round sprinkles that uh, I had a coupon for Michael's, so I got them because it's like, ooh, individual colors of whatever you call these kinds. <laughs> and I have some of the rainbow ones as well. And the other, oh, I have some of the long sort of like ice cream sprinkles here as well in purple and black. And then this is the tea ball that it's like a tea strainer thing that I bought from Ikea at one point. So the yarns I'm starting with, I'm going to start with two blanks and oh, maybe I'll pull out the colors before I do the blanks. So I have a plate and four plastic spoons. I would use a metal spoon, but I don't want to have the, the clank of metal on the dish because I know that that could be annoying. But we're going to start off today with four colors 
of Wilton's icing food coloring. And we're gonna use these colors to sort of do a gradient um, from blue to purple to this burgundy of speckles. Um, you don't have any more blanks to dye, so you're gonna go through your bare yarns and dye along today. Oh, awesome. Awesome, that sounds really fun. Um, but I do need, oh, hmm. I do need a knife because my cornflower blue, definitely, I have not opened it yet. I've been getting a lot of requests for this cornflower blue. So I'm excited to be able to deliver on that today. And I'm not sure what the, the hue of it will actually look like. So I am excited. Okay. Uh, oh, you have gold and silver sugar sprinkles? I'm not sure how metallic colors will really look. I have some of the silver color mist spray, but I haven't used it yet. So I'm taking just the end of a fork full of each of the colors. Um, and I'm doing this as just like an easy way to sort of have them um, so I can paint with them. And I have here, this is a, this is a little paintbrush that I got from one of the Ikea paint sets. I used it in briefly in the stamping and stenciling video. And I used just some Wilton's Violet and sort of paint, like drew a little R and it went really well. And the, if you're using tiny amounts of the paint or of the paint of the food coloring, you will get, you can get color without adding excess dye on top. So it didn't really spread very far. Um, so it gave really, really tiny specks of color. Now it would be a lot faster. Of course I'm not wearing gloves yet. It would be a lot faster if you were to do this and, oh dear. This is why I should have been wearing gloves. Um, it, would be, it would be a lot faster to add sprinkles to a blank using, just say, sprinkles yourself. So you could, oh goodness, there we go. Um, how I got green on my hands. Ugh. Pass, Rebecca, wipe off your dye container. Um, if you wanted to make your own sprinkles with these colors, make your own sugar sprinkles, and then use that, you could probably do something pretty similar a bit faster um, than doing this manually by hand. But I sort of enjoy the intimacy of the process of it. So, okay, here are our colors, and I really didn't take out very much of each of them here at first, but I'm gonna set this aside. And so cornflower blue has, so the violet, royal blue, and burgundy. Does burgundy have any? Burgundy does have some yellow in it. But they also all have blue number one and red number three. Oh, goodness, I still have some more dye on that sticker tip. <laughs> uh, yes, cornflower blue. You're not dying anything now, but you're enjoying the live stream this week. Yay! I'm happy to provide inspiration and I'm also happy to try to get this food coloring off of my finger before I go and accidentally smear on these blanks. So I have pre-soaked these blanks in some water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. And so this is enough to let the, the acid bind, or the food coloring bind. And I don't know if you can tell, but I've already laid out the plastic wrap on my work surface. Um, so that way, once we we're done with our specs, then we can be ready to go. Now, when I was doing the speckling on this, when I was doing the speckling on the skin of yarn that I showed at the beginning, I had to move the yarn around a lot to make sure I had reasonable coverage of the stacks. And that's not something I plan to do today with these blanks. Um, because since they're in the blank form, I have more access to all the yarn at once. Excuse me. So I'm really just gonna 
Well, I'm going to see what the paintbrush tells me to do as I'm doing this. Oh, so right now I am putting the yarns through my salad spinner to remove the excess water. You could hand wring, also roll the wrap the blanket in a towel to squish out excess water, but I find um, you get, you can still have some spreading of colors with low water, but it just sort of helps things as well. Okay, so here, now, oh, I guess I will, I am planning to flip. So I'm not planning to flip over the stroll blank at any point, but I will flip, I forgot that this one was on a flat blank. I do, will flip the worsted weight blank. Um, but you could also not do it and have patches of, of color. So the thing with the blanks is that you really have a lot of possibilities here. <laughs> I mean, you can, um, you know, you could draw lines, light lines across the fabric. And because it's across the stitches, that would result in some speckling and almost like a striped speckling because they would show up every few rows versus across the whole across the whole yarn. So lots and lots of possibilities. Okay. And let's move this chair a bit away. And actually, I think I'm going to zoom out a bit. So that way. Okay. All right. And I haven't figured out what, I guess I'm going to have to hold it like a, so I don't really want to set the plate on here. So this is the part that I haven't figured out. <laughs> I will put gloves on while I'm thinking about this. Oops, they're over here. Yeah, so I plan to just start with the cornflower blue and sort of see where this moves me. But again, like if you're painting really thin lines, you will end up with with specs, and you could do this in so many different ways. And I think that this is the cornflower blue that I'm starting with. So hopefully, I don't drop any of these forks on here. But I'm I'm sort of dipping the paintbrush into the dye and sort of removing some of the excess color. And then maybe I want to should dip this in some water first, but just sort of dipping and dabbing it on. It looks pretty dark so far. Um, maybe I want a tad bit of water in here. But it's fun, it really does feel like paint. I feel like a little a little would go a really, really long way. So the nice thing about using a brush instead of, of the fork that I used in the other video is that the brush um, isn't catch, gonna catch on the fibers in the same kind of way. Um, so that's something that is, that is nice. But with each of these sort of like specs that I'm creating, we are, Wow, a little bit of food coloring goes a long, long way. Yeah, I'm literally just doing doing dots. You can see how we're gonna have a lot of food coloring left over. And so the superwash yarn is a bit different because colors don't bind as quickly on the superwash, but I'm still able to get some really nice great specs and even if they're a bit bigger woohoo I am seeing they're starting to spread um, I'm starting to see some separation into some pink purple and blue down here I'll probably rinse this and go into another color at some point so that way uh, I can 
But the nice thing is that the, the color penetration of this is pretty low as well. Um, I should make a spot to set the plate down when I need to. The color penetration is pretty low. So that way, uh, the even if I cover specks on a lot of this, there's still going to be plenty of white. Yeah, this is the cornflower blue. And now I have a cup of water right here. I haven't used the cornflower blue before, um, but I know it sort of looks to me right now, it's probably a bit more purple than the royal blue. Maybe I did a mistake going from, you know, I chose the gradient to do cornflower and then royal based on you know, because it looked like it would be a paler blue, but I don't think that that was a reasonable, the, the best representation of what I was hoping for. But I still think this will be cool because maybe the, the violet will end up looking a lot like the cornflower blue as it separates. And then all right, I'm just sort of dabbing my sponge on one of the same cotton drop cloths that I've been using all week. Try pouring sprinkles in the middle of the of the tube. Ooh, that could be fun. Huh, it would be, I think that they would stick, but maybe I'll try that in one of the other blanks. I have a couple tubed blanks. Okay. Now let's go for the royal blue. Okay, so the royal blue is like a deeper color. And I Oops, I plan to have some mixture of the colors, so, so it kind of gives it a nice gradient. Uh -huh. Oh, shoot. Hello? <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you. Bye. Sorry, guys. <laughs> At least it wasn't the school. I always... If, if you have watched, you know that I'm like always afraid that the school is going to call and tell me to come pick up the kids, especially when I'm doing a live stream, because uh, that would just be inconvenient. Do, do, do. That's kind of fun. As like more dye comes off, whoops, that's the as more and more dye kind of comes off the, the paintbrush, you know, you see the colors get even lighter. But I think, ooh, some of these are breaking, you know, because there's some teal in the cornflower blue. Some of these specks over here are looking, it looks a lot more like delphinium blue, I think, than, than violet. That's really cool. Now I'm a little curious what the royal blues will do. Uh, mainly because they, uh, the royal blue, do, so it does have red number three in it. It's just not very much. So when I did the, the breaking, um, the breaking of it, you can see it. It's just very, very subtle. What are the odds that I paint my face today? Pretty high, right? But yeah, I definitely see some breaking on the the Wilton's violet as well but the nice thing about this and doing this gradient is that you know you'll have specks in like the same same location and where they mix in the same location so if I was doing you know two skeins of yarn it would be a bit more random I guess and I'll fill in there's like a no man's land stripe in the middle and that's something that I will sort of fill in as we as we go. I'm gonna get a tiny bit of water on there for this. There we go. Yeah, but I definitely feel like I could try to like write something here. And now unlike the spray painting, I think I'm still getting penetration, or a lot similar to the spray painting, I'm getting penetration very close to the top of the, the yarn. Ooh, if I just barely touch it, you get the tiniest little specks. But I can also get some penetration more towards the back as well. But we know that when we unravel this, that we will end up with 
um, that as this unravels, we will end up with this gradient of the speckles that we wouldn't get if we were just starting in the skin. And I don't know if you can see the different hues. You all just held your breath when my phone rang. Well, that's funny. Um, yeah, the I think that using the so yesterday I showed some of the food coloring markers, and I think those would be great for specs as well. Um, because the they were a little hard to write with just because I think you needed a little more pressure than the paintbrush. So I think it's a little easier when you can dab, dab, dab to get the color you want. But the paintbrush, you know, it's got more, there's more surface area along this thin tip than the marker had. So maybe if the markers were more of a long, uh, what would you call it? Like a, like a, not a pointy tip, but like a longer tip. That would be a bit easier. Adding a dip. This really does look like a, a painter's palette, doesn't it? Sort of giving myself a little boundary for my work. This is also going a bit faster than I had expected. So again, if you were to draw very thin lines and just do very, very thin stripes versus this more sort of random haphazard way I'm doing it, you would get some, you would get speckles. Um, they would just be in a more regular way. Like if I were to unravel this as is, I would have a stripe of white in between these specks. But my goal is to potentially try to have some specks in every row and of all different sizes, which is why I am sort of twisting this around as I go. But, yeah, and, it, and I think that time is also something that helps a lot here um, because it will take some time for the colors to start to break. Like I see a lot of breaking around down here and with the violet, I don't see much yet. So if I were to be heating this right away, then maybe that's not something that I would see as much of. Do, do, do. I'm sort of just twisting this as I go to even make, it feels like very much like very, very loosely covered with sprinkles. And so we could do something similar with using the sprinkles to make like a gradient of specks. And you could do another kind of gradient of specs where you could have them be tighter at one end and get them closer to clo and closer together at the other. There's just so many things that you get so much more control over if you are using, if you're hand painting or, you know, versus doing something in the kettle or using these blanks versus a skein. And so the nice thing is when I flip over this worsted weight one to do the wrong side, um, the nice thing is that even if I don't, uh, even if I don't have like the color sections exactly where they were, the, the two skeins will be identical. So it'll be awesome still. Cool. This does really make me sort of feel like I use these long uh, sprinkles on here, the way that it's it's looking. I wish you guys could see, I guess you can get, maybe get a sense, a small sense of the color. An angled brush, yes, an angled brush is sort of what I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh, but can you tell that the specks are sort of bigger here on the wool of the Andes blank, and they're a lot sharper on the on the stroll blank, which is the wider one closer to me. Um, and I think that that's just because the colors are will strike faster on the on the stroll blank. And hee hee, I'm starting to see my beautiful beautiful little blue halos around my violet. 
It also could be that the that the stroll that, or that the wall of the Andes is retaining a bit more water. But I'm gonna get a tiny bit of water to sort of mix into my burgundy paint. That was a big splotch. I really don't want to drop any of these forks on here. And I don't know if you can see all of these, these strands at the end, but I'm sort of speckling that too. You think they're called chisel tip markers? Yeah, probably. That sounds right. Chisel tip. I'm not a uh, marker or pen enthusiast. And so when, when we're done with these blanks, you could set the color to them in a couple different ways. Now, if you were unhappy with the color and I was just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna rinse this out, you would probably be able to get some of the color back out, but a lot of the color, especially on the stroll blank, might potentially already be bound even without heat. I don't know if you remember when I dyed. So again, this was Dye Pot Weekly number one, and I was speckling with dry Kool-Aid. And what I was doing there, um, so when I when I was first, I was like, oh, I want to over dye this with just some, you know, teal Kool-Aid. That would be really cool. That'll be really fun. Let's do it. But when I went and I did it, the color struck so fast to the stroll that I ended up with more of a modeled, less of a, even less, more of a semi-solid than I was sort of hoping for. So, or more, more variation of that tone. Uh, this burgundy is a little thicker than some of the colors. Now the burgundy, even though it has blue, probably will not give us a blue halo, but we might see like a darker and lighter pink sort of halo over here but I think that this is actually a kind of fun little gradient and subtle. I'm not sure if a gradient of specks quite like this is something that you've really seen much of. I think that gradients, people tend to do gradients as more solid. This is fun. I, I really like, I really, I mean, I know I, I am kind of an artist at other times, but I really feel like an artist today. So that is extra, extra fun. Just have to decide how dense. Try to be a little consistent. But so the specs, when I unravel it, we should have a variety of specs that look thicker and look thinner. And so that will be really, really fun. Finding some for no man's land, so then I can add some violet up in there and kind of go backwards back through before I flip the Will of the Andes one over. And stick that in. Now, you know, you could draw, I mean, you could actually paint a lot of stuff. Your car's covered with snow. Oh, I can't, I'm so, you guys are so lucky that you got snow. Um, I mean, I guess, okay, I guess it's variable. I don't know if people are having snow days or what, but I wanted some snow. The rain is pretty, pretty miserable. Because uh, you can't even go out and play in it. It's a lot of burgundy still on my on my brush. Oh, I almost spilled that water all over. That would have been would have been sad. But you know what? It would have been sad, but it would have been a beautiful beautiful mistake. I try to have positivity when it comes to my dying. So I'm coming through this section to sort of have 
cannot be a totally clean break between the colors. Um, so that way, you know, there, there will be a little bit of a transition period. Okay, I'm going to go back down to the royal blue, and I think I want to fill in the royal blue a bit more and the cornflower blue. The cornflower blue is looking awesome and definitely distinct. So the halo of the teal, because I think there's a lot more blue within the cornflower blue, is bigger than what I'm seeing around the violet but it's also more teal than the blue that I'm seeing come out around the violet. Um, oh, funny, I'm, I think I don't have, it's only, I'm missing some stuff. Oh, well, you got hiccups, so I was like missing the, uh, the hiccups comment. But if you're just tuning in, Today's theme of the soft blank special is speckles and sprinkles. So right now I'm hand painting a gradient of speckles using extremely, extremely, extremely concentrated Wilton's uh, icing colors. So with very, very little water, um, I'm using it very much like paint to add these speckles. And so that way, um, you know, there's not like an, a lot of extra dye that I don't think that there'll be much that will be rinsed out when, when I'm done with this, but the, we'll end up with this really cool gradient of speckles when we unravel it. And I'm doing this on two different yarns. I'm doing this on the uh, Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight yarn. This is a double-stranded blank up there and on a Knit Picks blank that is the Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. So the, the wider blank is 50 percent uh sorry 75% superwash merino 25% nylon uh, so the the colors tend to stick a bit faster to it but what we're getting from this technique is we're getting some really cool halos and so the speckles are sort of multi-dimensional uh, which is not something that that you get as much as if you're going to speckle, well, you can still get it if you're going to speckle with col dry colors or something that broke. Uh, but I made this Wool of the Andes worsted weight blank on my Singer knitting machine, which even though I think that the yarn that I'm going to get from it is going to be awesome, and I'm really excited to unravel it, I do not, and I might break my own recommendation, but I do not recommend uh, trying to do anything double stranded on the crank knitting machines I've reviewed, unless, uh, I, I only recommend it if, you know, you're willing to risk breaking the machine because I could hear the gears struggling and I knew I was risking breaking the machine entirely. So, but this is so, so fun. I mean, it, it takes some time. Um, but we start to see these like hot specks of blue amongst the violet and it's just so beautiful. So, so, so beautiful. Okay. I have a little water. I definitely want to fill in the cornflower blue over here. Now you could, and I'm sort of rotating the way I have the brush. Um, I want, I don't really want there to be any, any stripes, uh, of color. I sort of want, or stripes of white. I sort of want the color to be, uh, you know, there to be specks throughout. I'm sure there might be some longer spe specks of white, but that's fine. <laughs> but I'm not planning to flip this uh, stroll blank, but I am gonna flip the worsted blank. 
it could be cool to have the like regular more white patches in combination with the way you get the uh the specs but this is something that could definitely if you were to leave it as is could lead to pooling which of course could be awesome um pooling is a really really fun thing to play with but if you don't necessarily want the pooling um then you know it might not be the way that you you want to have it um because you would it would be a no, noticeably not as random as what I've got going on over here. What do we think? Maybe there's a section of the royal blue I want to fill in a tiny bit more on that one. I guess I can't really wrap them up at the same time yet because I need to, I mean, it's one piece of plastic wrap. Where did my phone go? I'm trying to take pictures sort of hold on for the for the recap videos but i also maybe i can zoom in a lot right now so then you can see let's see if i can zoom in a bit more Yeah, I don't think the breaking is really showing up that well on the camera. Just too bad. Because I'd like to, actually, maybe I can do, do the old snap a picture with my phone and then hold it up. Because sometimes that's the best way to show um, you guys some of what's happening. Okay, here. Here is a close up of what is happening with the cornflower blue. So I'm not sure if you can get the hues from that, but we've got the pink with these teal, these teal halos around it. And I'm not necessarily seeing any breaking with the burgundy, except more of a hot pink halo. Just like with the royal blue, I'm seeing just sort of the, the brighter blue halo, but it is, very, very fun. Um, it's too bad, even on here, the specs are very, very subtle in terms of the colors, but it's just fun. Uh, it'll be really, really awesome when we unravel it. Um, instead of plastic wrap, would very light vinyl do the trick? Can you microwave vinyl? That would be my, my question. So now I'm gonna flip this over so I can add some speckles to the other side. Maybe I'll start with the royal blue since that's the one I wanted to fill in a bit more on the stroll blank. I think the royal blue is over here. Now these, these colors are so concentrated on my brush that I don't care that my water is taking some dark color there. I mean, that might have been the, there could definitely be some rose. Oh, maybe. See, I could just keep speckling a really, really long time. It would not be hard to just keep going and going and going. Um, it's hard to know when to stop. So the, the point of when to stop is when, when you're happy with it. But here I am doing the, if I were to sort of cut the blank down the middle, not that I really want to play with sticking of these. Um, if I were to cut it down the middle and lay it out flat, uh, it would be about a, almost as wide as the stroll blank is right here. But so if you're just tuning in, this, the one that I'm currently speckling, the narrow one is Wool of the Andes. It's 100% wool, but it is also a double-stranded blank. And this one is the Stroll Superwash Nylon Blend, the, the flat blank. I'm sort of wiping the brush off. I'm like already so pumped, 
so, so pumped to unravel these. I don't think you can really understand how excited I am. And so a little bit of water to just thicken, thicken it up. But I am sort of in the, these no man zones doing a little bit of both. Uh, and I'm going to do some on this top part so they go all the way to the end. This is something that I don't think I've been wanting to do this for so long. And I think this was the main reason why I decided to have like a speckled theme on the dye along. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to do the, the low immersion technique as well. I think that that will be really, really awesome. But the speckling is something that I just really enjoy. Let's see if there's any questions. Uh, vinyl in the microwave, but you don't know. Oh, you'll do a little research and post it. Steaking. Yeah, steaking would be, so steaking is when you, like if you knit a sweater and then you cut it and sort of secure the, the, the ends down so they don't unravel and then you can add buttons and stuff to it. It's not something I've tried, but it's something that I think if you look at, say, commercially knit sweaters, it's something that you would probably see a lot in those just because I think that it's, as, as we've learned, I think it's a little easier for a machine to knit in the round sometimes than flat. Um, because, you know, I wanted to add some more there. And then let's do so a few. So we can overlap with the burgundy. So the four colors I'm using in case you tuned in a little later. These four colors are Wilton's Violet, uh, Royal Wilton's Royal Blue, Cornflower Blue, and Burgundy. And I just stuck the back of these plastic forks into the vials just as is and am painting with a tiny bit of water to dilute the food coloring. And I had already speckled the first half of this worsted weight blank. So you could do the speckling in all one color on a blank as well. And I think it would be cool, I don't think I'm gonna do it today, but to vary the frequency of the specks. So to start off with like very few and then make them closer and closer and closer together. I think that that, ugh, hmm. I, mean, I just think that that would be fun. And now you see me like pausing and thinking and like, oh, maybe I should do that today. But I do want to play around with some other techniques because I think that visually this one isn't necessarily as fun to watch. But the reason why I picked these colors and especially the violet and the cornflower blue is that I knew that they would break. So that way when we unravel this within the specks, you'll see these small specks of color, but in some places they'll have two colors. And so that'll be really, really fun. Oh, and I can turn up the heat on my steamer pot. Um, so you could definitely microwave this. I think one of the reasons why I've been going with the steamer pot is just because it, if I get distracted, um, if I get distracted, like, you know, I don't know. There's just, it, it gives you a little more time to get things, it gives you a little more time. And so it gives me some downtime so I can sit down and drink some water whereas the microwave is done a lot faster. And so, and things like that. Okay, maybe we need some more over here. There is blue. So the burgundy does have some of the, the blue number one as well. It just doesn't really, um, it doesn't really break into blue because there's so much red that by the time, oops, come on spoon, give me some more color. By the time the reds come out, 
the oops, hopefully I didn't mix that up too much. By the time the reds bind, like the blues bind pretty quickly. So um oh and I pre-soaked I pre-soaked both of these blanks in water uh with two tablespoons of white vinegar. So that way when I steam it, there's already acid in here. But I do think it would be fun to play around with letting some food coloring absorb to yarn and then spritzing it with vinegar after the fact. I think that that could be kind of fun. Do not want to drop. Now that I am clo closing in on this, now is not the time to drop something on here and mess up my gorgeous gradients. But I think that this is going to be really, really cool. And we've got actually a lot of food coloring in this cup right here. But I've been saving a bunch of the rinse water and stuff because that's a good, fun candidate to do with some color breaking later on. Um, yeah, so now I've got my steamer pot ready to go. I'm going to start wrapping these up. Now, it is possible that we will get some uh, color bleeding because I am using almost straight food coloring here. But you can see that we have some penetration to the wrong side. Um, even I can see on the plastic wrap. But most of, I think, and on the wrong side, actually, we see mostly, like on here, on the back side of the cornflower blue, you see a lot of the teal, you don't really see the pinks, because the pinks strike a lot faster on the right side. And yeah, I think about 200 grams is about the limit. Um, let's set the timer for 20 minutes. Maybe I'll decide to do longer since there's more in there, but, tw um, 200 grams of yarn is about the max that my steamer basket can fit at any given time. So, oh, and I haven't added any of the other yarns to vinegar yet. Um, they're pre-soaking in plain water and I can transfer them. But I think that I want to think a tiny bit about what techniques we want to do on the, on the other blanks. So, as I come here to sit down, uh, where, where is my notes? And of course I keep thinking of like, where on earth is my notebook? Oh, here it is. What, was it like Blue's Clues or something? Like my handy dandy notebook. That's kind of where my head keeps going. But I am going to send you guys to a brief commercial break. Um, so that way, uh, the, the commercials help support this channel, and I uh, really, really appreciate um, you guys putting up with some commercials. So I am going to uh, send you to one in just a moment. Not everyone will see it, and I mean, if you have YouTube Red, you don't see it at all. But yeah, that way I can sit down and have a little bit of a drink. <laughs> but I have to wait for the preview player. Here we go. I always have to wait for the preview player to pop up and know that I'm at the point where I had just said I'm gonna throw you to a commercial break. Otherwise, like it says I'm gonna throw you one after I've already done it, and that's weird. Um, so I don't know what happens if, and you're watching the, um, the live stream on a little bit of a delay, but the way you can tell that it's live is if you sort of hover over the, the bar where the pause button is. If you are watching up to date the most live part, you'll see a little red light on with live. Otherwise, you'll see live and it with an extra gray dot. And that means that you're watching not the most recent stuff that's streaming, streaming off. So I can pull up the chat. And whoo, it's windy up there. Oh, you did some snow dying wool? That's awesome. Um, if, uh, if there's any questions that I missed, please, please let me know. 
Um, there, there's a lot of chat and it's a little hard to scan as I'm, as I'm standing up. But to recap for people who are just tuning in, uh, I am Rebecca from Cabinets and this is the last dying live stream of our soft blank special. I will have a lot of pre-filmed non-live recaps of the different yards that, of the different blanks that we dyed. And I'll have probably, not 100% sure if it'll happen sooner, but probably next Tuesday, I will, I'm will. i gonna try to do an unravel-a-thon where I'm gonna sit and unravel as many of these blanks as I can in a sitting. And once they're all unraveled, I'll do another recap of the dry blanks and then the yarns that they turned into. So that way you can see, cause I know the resolution isn't always great on these live streams, but then you can, can see a little more about what happened and then know which live stream you wanna check out if you wanna watch the, some dying. But, so in addition to, you know, watching the videos, um, if you wanna support the Chemist Tutorials YouTube channel, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, when you watch a video, if you enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I think that that helps it show up more on search results. And so then, uh, then more people can see it, and so that helps me. Um, and you can also, if you're enjoying the stream, there's a little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat field. And so that is Super Chat. So that you can use that for two ways. One is sort of a tip jar to contribute to the materials and everything that I use in these videos. The other thing is if you want um, a comment or question to be highlighted above the you know, and stay up longer. It's a way to get your message to show up in like a bright colored box and it really stands out and makes it noticeable. But I do try to respond to all the questions that I see. Occasionally the chat runs a little fast, so that can be a little hard to do. But mainly, mainly it's a tip jar. So, <laughs> so that's there. But right now, um, while our, the yarns, the two, the two uh, hundred grams of yarn that I just dyed are steaming in the steamer pot, I'm just sitting for a moment to drink a little bit. And I had a snack before I started, but I might need to at some point have another snack. Is that a rogue? There you go. <laughs> it's a hair coming out that's bugging me. But what I'm curious, so the last time I tried this speckling technique, um, I used a fork and I used just Wilton's Violet on a skein of the Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. And I'm not sure if the purples are reading through, but we got these stuffs that were purple but spread into blue. And so using the brush that I used today, I'm expecting the stuffs to not be as long because there's less liquid that I added at any given point, but we'll still see some teeny specks and some teeny breaking, I think, when we unravel this yarn. And it'll be really cool and we'll get obviously the gradient of the four colors so that way if they become mittens or something you'll see like it'll be speckled but you'll get this gradient of the speckles and i think that that will just be really really kind of snazzy <laughs> snazzy <laughs> oh man sometimes i just you know amuse even i get i get amused by myself <laughs> um but okay so i have how many other Okay, so I have three other skeins of yarn that have pre-soaked with no vinegar. I'm tempted, I'm tempted to do some speckling with a low immersion technique. Um, and I sort of want to try it on the work surface, but maybe, uh, and we could play with that with some sprinkles and stuff as well. I don't know about adding sprinkles into the dye bath. I think that with the sugar sprinkles, they dissolve really fast, so you wouldn't get much color. But yeah, you can see that I'm sort of brainstorming what I want to do and what yarn. So the two other blanks, so the straw blank, I'm sort of saving for that low immersion. And I plan to use some Kool-Aid with it, so that's why I haven't added any acid to that soap yet. The other two blanks that I have are a thin, so it was a Singer knitting machine knit one, in the round with two strands of Bear Knit Picks Hawthorne yarn. And so this, that yarn is 80% superwash, um, I, superwash wool, I forget exactly the breed, and 20% polyamide, um, which is basically nylon. 
oh, this is another name for nylon. And I don't know why they don't call it nylon. Maybe because I don't know if there's a branding thing or something, but um, it's basically a super washable nylon blend as well. But it's, uh, I think it has fewer plies in the stroll, so it's a little different. Um, so, oh, wait, Joanne, if the food coloring will stay darker, it will become paler with washes. I guess I didn't see the first part of that. Are you, are you asking if the food coloring is wash fast? In my experience, the food coloring does stay in washes. Um, I recommend that you wash on cold, but that's the case with all acid dyes. So acid dyes bind through a combination of ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds, and some van der Waals interactions, which are bonds that can be very, very strong, but they can be disrupted. Um, whereas if you're using something like fiber reactive dyes, the bonds between the fibers and the dyes are through covalent bonds, which are stronger and a lot harder to disrupt. You need more of a reaction to disrupt it versus a change in condition. So with things that with acid dyes, you should wash on cold and um, it, you know, keep the pH neutral or acidic because if it goes um, so, so you don't disrupt and get bleeding. But I have things that I've used and washed that have retained their food coloring for years. Um, I have a video on the channel where I washed a machine washed a swatch and compared it to one that I didn't wash. And you can see that it was really fast, color fast. Can you dye with great Fanta soda? Um, maybe. Um, I've gotten a few requests for, for the grape soda. I expect it would be very similar to grape Kool-Aid in terms because the overall color of the beverages is similar. But yeah, I mean, I might need to do a little another mini soda series because I, I enjoy all the colors as I go through the supermarket. Um, okay, so the two, the two bases that I'm considering for the sprinkles right now and the, the thing that's a little bit of a bummer is that since they are, uh, well, maybe we should keep one side way. Since they are blanks that I knit in the round, that's why they, they have, they're two sides. So doing the sprinkles is a little hard. Well, I suppose they might stick, but they might fly off as I flip it over. Excuse me. So I've got the Hawthorne yarn, which is a essentially 80% superwash wool, 20% nylon. And then I have the Cash Sock MCN, um, which is from Wool to Die For, and I believe that it is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. So I was curious uh, what, how you guys might want me to dye these, because we could do some like random kind of pattern with some of the sprinkles. I could spray, ooh, maybe I should do this. I could spray one side. I still have the spray food coloring that I used last night. I put away the color message sprays, but in the miso, I think I still have a teal. So maybe I could do teal on one side and then do a bunch of sprinkles on the other to sort of like speckle and spraying with the teal would leave another kind of speckled area on the other side, so that could be cool. Um, so I could uh, dip dye it before doing sprinkles. Um, there, there are some options, so it depends on what you guys want to see. Otherwise, I think I might take the, the bare hawthorn and spray one side, flip it over, and then add some sprinkles to the other. But yeah. Um, so another comment, so far I've washed all my home dyed yarns in the washing machine instead of by hand because you're lazy and the colors are still absolutely amazing. Awesome! I'm glad. Uh, it's always a, I've had some com commercial yarns that when I've, I got, I've, uh, you know, to block. Oh, there was one that had gorgeous, gorgeous colors. It was a silk. Um, and then I, I soaked it so that way I could block when I knit out of it and then all the reds came out. And I was like, no, I was excited by that. So it's always kind of a bummer when something like that happens. But, you know, it's not just an indie dyer problem. It's a problem with bigger manufacturers as well. But I don't see any other suggestions popping up. I know some of you guys are dying along at home and so that's cool. Um, and that 
this, I, I also can be, uh, love the spray and sprinkles idea, awesome. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I just needed like someone to like it. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Yeah, I, I did the, ooh, but should I do that? Okay, but should I do that on the cashmere blend? Or, no, I'll do the Hawthorne first, because that's thinner. Um, so this is similar. I did some double-sided stuff like this last night in the spray special. But, oh, first I need to add this to, to the vinegar solution. Um, the yarn has already, whoops, I'm getting, oh no, what got tangled? Oh, I grabbed the strand of one yarn that I didn't need to, okay. All right, I'm working it out. Oh dear, okay. Here we go. All right, I've already pre-soaked the blank in just tap water, but I have another bath that has vinegar in it as I do the, oh, come on. Yes, I do the sniff test to make sure I'm looking at the right one. And so it won't require very long to be in the vinegar bath before we're ready to go. But I am making a bit of a mess. Whoa, and the steam, oh, these specks are spreading out. It's really, really cool. Um, I can't wait to show you. Oh, where's my tongs? Uh-oh, Keith. The wonderful, wonderful Keith does the, uh, the dishes around here. Uh -huh. I found them. They're in the dishwasher. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this tool does not need to be washed because uh, I will be using it again. Um, but then sometimes I can't find anything. So last night, if you didn't see my spray paint um, soft leg special, I used the Wilton Color Mist sprays and then played around with a few other options Oh, I might only need one piece. Oh, I guess I'll do two in case I have to arch it and sort of a rainbow again. Um, I played with some different methods of adding spray paint to our spray food coloring to the yarns so that way you could get something that's refillable. And of them, I mean, I think I really like the application from the Color Mist spray bottles, which means that if you're going to be doing a lot of spraying, maybe you want to look into a food coloring airbrush type system. But I also really enjoyed just, I think these almost might be like little perfume spritzers. Um, all of the sprays worked pretty well with stencils to add a pattern to our, to our yarns. But um, I was surprised that I thought that my favorite would be the pre this pressurized sprayer that's the Misto, um, which is made for like olive oil. So that way you can use a non aerosol, you know, oil spray for your cooking. I, I really expected that to be my favorite. So I was surprised when, you know, it really does, the dye comes out, it's definitely pressurized, but it was hard to feel, maybe I would need to practice with it more to feel like I had control. Now my least favorite, just because it's a little unwieldy was the massive bottle <laughs> that I got at a home improvement store. But you know, if it's, if it's what you have, it still, I think gave, all of them gave nice shallow kind of, whoa, I'm echoing in my pan. That's cool. All of them gave really shallow color penetration. So all of them are good candidates. Um, for lightly applying color. And the reason why, this might not make a huge difference. Oh dear. I had some color on my gloves. That's okay. Oh, bummer. Uh, when you forget to go wash your gloves off. Uh, so little bits of pink on there, but that's fine. At least it's a double-stranded blank, so it'll look It'll be in a couple spots and it'll feel intentional. 
So I'm putting it through the salad center to remove as much of the water as possible. But I also sort of did it get very much. Yeah, I got some. I also wring it out beforehand, so I think we're pretty good there. But removing the the water helps prevent colors from spreading further. Now. It would be interesting to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the way colors spread out in the microwave versus a steamer basket. Um, oh yeah, this is the one that was going so well and at the very end I really messed it up. Um, I forgot about that. Um, I, I'm like it, it was going so well and then close to the end all of a sudden um, I was trying really, really quickly to finish the blank and it just like all the stitches went a little wonky. Um, but I'm going to spray paint one side with the Misto that has a teal mixture and depending on, huh, depending on how much there is, maybe it'll end up being more of a gradient with another color. And then I'll flip it over and we'll do some different sprinkles on the other side. Some of the spray bottles you, you've used have leaked, yes. Um, and no, I have not tried beet juice yet. Microwave versus steamer, yes please, sure. I mean, in some, I prefer to use a steamer when I'm doing uh, non, oh, the timer's about to go off, so I'll hold off for a moment on, on spraying here. Uh, and of course I lost my train of thought. Um, the steamer basket is like when I'm using acid dye or non-food safe dyes, I prefer to stick with the steamer basket, mainly because I don't want, um, uh, I do not want, uh, to have to deal with cleaning my microwave. I think it could be safe to use the microwave. Um, I mean, I use my kitchen counter and kitchen sink and just clean things off, but I, for some reason, I just, with the, with the microwave, since it's a little up high and a little hard to clean, it's just something that I'm less interested in. But I will say that even though, you know, we're steaming in the steamer basket and it's a lot wetter than things get in the microwave, how will I pick this up? I can show you guys. Um, things get a lot wetter. I, you don't really get um, much water transfer, especially if the, if you're dealing with yarn that isn't wrapped up, you might get some dye in the water beneath, but the water is clear right now. So this is our yarns that we did before. And so you can see on the wool of the Andes, you see a lot more of the color spreading out. And I mean, we're looking at the wrong sides and a little of the plastic wrap where there's some um, spreading, but I think, I think this is going to be so cool. Um, hopefully it won't take too, too long to cool off. Um, put that over there. Okay. And you love pickled beets. Um, oh, this pickled, I haven't, I don't think I've ever had pickled beets before. Um, I like, I like beets though. Okay. So you can see how powerful this is. I'll need to wipe this out, but oh, the nice thing about the miso compared to the other sprayers is, I mean, it's taking a little bit for me to get the level of coverage down and there's some dripping, but I think maybe if you were to add some, maybe if you were to add some vinegar or not vinegar, some alcohol to the to the spray you might be able to uh, thin out some of these drops so it's not even by any respect and it's definitely taking some time oh because there's less liquid in here now ha huh. yeah I don't even think that it's that I'm out of pressure um, I think I'm just out of liquid too. But I will deal with that another another time. But I got really good coverage 
of our yarn here. So that's good. And wiping this up so that way I can flip it over without adding too much of this extra dye to the yarn. I have found that, so if I were to start touching this right now, uh, we would, my hands would definitely get covered in food coloring uh, because like, I mean, the dye hasn't completely absorbed, but I'm excited to, you can see that, you know, there is some color penetration here to the wrong side in some of the spots, but actually we've got some really cool discrete specks from this as well. And there's the, the extra. And this time, for picking up the sprinkles, actually, well, I am gonna wash off my gloves and dry it, but then I'm gonna take the gloves off, I think, to start playing with these sprinkles. And I have a lot, so we can play with a bunch of them. And I like, you know, since we have a consistent color on one side, we can really go wild on the other. And there's something then that holds it all together. So that's nice. Um, but I do want to come in and, oh, here's our, I'm gonna take a picture of the other side, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, the recap will survive. Um, let me see. I'm just popping back in here for a minute. Um, thankful for the shower curtain. Yes. Um, the, the Mesa spray is very powerful, <laughs> very, very powerful, but I guess at first I wasn't sure, you know, I thought I liked the little pens better, but those, it's hard to get like a line. I think that if you were to practice with the Misto and get used to the, the amount of trigger that you needed to do to spray, that it would work pretty well. Um, <laughs> and the other nice thing about the, the shower curtain is that the, my countertop is so dappled that it gives kind of more of a consistent uh, backdrop for this too. So, all right. So I have a mixture of a lot of different sprinkles and many of these I have never even opened up, but I do want to start with these non parallels, non parallels. I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm really, really bad with pronouncing things. Um, now, Obviously, when I'm wearing gloves to keep from dyeing my hands, and if my hands are wet, I certainly, certainly risk uh, adding color, adding these specks of color to my fingertips. So that is just something to keep in mind as you're doing this. Yep, and you might, okay, I guess I want to put the gloves back on, or maybe I just don't care, and I'll just get some food coloring on me. You can see that I've got a nice little rainbow on the palm of my hand right now. Some of these have, have shakers, so that's nice. I really like these sugar sprinkles. Um, I think that they are really cool in the way that they add the, their specks of color to yarn. Um, I, I want to make my own. Some of you have given me some recipes for doing that, and I would love to do that at some point. I'm very, very excited to explore that more in the future. Um, I think that if I'm going to try using some of these with some low immersion lighter, I would lean more towards the kind that had a little more substantial than the sugar sprinkles. I think that those would dissolve a bit faster. Um, but so I was excited. Oh, do I have little containers to put? I should see if I have some good little containers for those because uh, I thought I saved. The one problem with using them is when the containers that they are, if I'm not gonna use all of them, then I don't want them to go to waste or get mixed up. But I guess I'll just use some of the, oh, do we not have another shallow one? Oh, come on, Rebecca. Okay. What? Okay, I've got three little dishes. 
was hoping that this had like a nice way that it opened up. But so the ingredients in here, sugar, cornstarch, dextrin, wax. Um, this is blue number one, yellow number five, and red number 40. And the purple is red number three and blue number one, just as we'd expect. And the blue is just blue number one. So there we have it. Our, our little, little sprinkles, which, I mean, these just look like something that I want to play with anyway. Oh! <laughs> Did you guys see that? This is staticky over here. Those, when I picked this up, those just sort of went everywhere. Um, that is really, really funny. Okay, let's use these in two different sections. That is funny. That is really, really funny. Um, the thing about using, using these sprinkles that is cool um, is that a little goes a long way. Um, they, they do almost look a little metallic-y. They, they have a shimmer to them, which I don't think is going to do much of anything. Um, I am curious, maybe I'll use some of these purple ones after those other, the purple sugar crystals, just to see if I notice much of a difference of anything. Yeah, so the downside, I mean, I got the, each of these containers for just, for, less than a dollar, which was great, but I can see since they don't have a container that that's kind of a pain. Let's use some of the black sugar crystals. So the other, the Wilton's Black Spray on Stroll Yarn tends to read a bit black or sort of like a gray. On the Wool of the Andes yarn that we did yesterday, it ended up, ooh, am I gonna lose, I don't wanna lose the ingredients. On the Wool of the Andes spray that we did yesterday, it actually does look sort of like the mauve, burgundy kind of color. Well, all right, losing the instructions, that's fine. Uh, again, let's compare, whoa, those are dark. I don't know if you can really tell how dark from where you guys are looking, how dark those black ones are compared to the purple. But that, oh, that is cool. That is so, so cool. Um, I am very excited. Okay, and these are the ice cream sprinkles. So I've used some of these on Funny. The black ones on here actually look a little like, oh, droppings almost, I guess I could say it. Ah, let's see. Um, have you tried the Wilton's Shimmer Powder? No. Shimmer Powder, I have not. I do have some Wilton's Dust that I haven't used yet. Um, and I have those powdered food colorings as well that I also haven't. These have a lot of color in them kind of nice and I sort of want hmm oh maybe I'll do some more rainbow over here so I think the rainbow doesn't have any black when I picked because I was in the cake decorating aisle at my at AC Moore and so I picked this rainbowy one because I wanted one that had the bright like the least amount of white as possible Sort of adding, adding some more. So with the sugar sprinkles, uh, those might start to dissolve a little faster. But these black ones are cool. Uh, oh, I haven't used the green. Green sugar sprinkles. Um, maybe I'll use this bright blue again, just because. 
have it. You can see that oh, and some are going on the floor. So it's sort of a nice, fun little candy, like a candy decorating. Um, and so these, you know, will give some of the speckles will be really small. Um, like these sugar sprinkles give teeny, teeny, teeny speckles. Um, ooh, let's do, so I've got this extra little mini skein of the, the yarn. So I'm just going to add some black to that. I'm way, way curious to see what happens with this black. This is the most opaque of the sugar sprinkles I think I have ever, ever really seen. So I think that that's really, really cool. But I think we're going to just have a nice semi-random little cake thing here. And I mean, these will mix as I'm wrapping them up. But the nice thing about when I'm doing sprinkles, I tend to do a bit more, uh, if I'm microwaving, I tend to do more heat than I would for say um, something else. And that's just because I want the sprinkles to dissolve. The other thing I do is I will let it soak in water a lot longer for the same kind of reason, because the you want the sprinkles to dissolve so you get these cool, cool colors. Because if they, you know, if the sprinkles haven't dissolved, then it's just, I guess, harder. Um, so I'm going to take this and put it in the steamer basket. But, oops, sorry about that. I've had good luck getting things to to dissolve over time, and actually, my hands aren't that bad but I'm just wiping off those extra bit of sprinkles. I think some of these, if I set up a, like a low immersion station, I might want to, to try there, but I'm going to come down again and see what you guys have to say. Um, oh wait, I'm seeing, okay. Lots of, lots of stuff. Um, oh, I didn't see Sandy's question. Um, you're not sure you understand the danger of acid dyes beyond bringing the particles when mixing the acid in water. There aren't, there aren't really dangers. I mean, it's very safe to use. It's safe to have on clothing. Um, but the danger is really that since it has not been approved for consumption, you want to use separate equipment. Um, you don't want to use the same pots and pans that you use for food just because, you know, you don't know, we don't really know. I don't think it's really been studied what the chemicals can can do, and so there's a reason why things get approved for consumption and why some things don't. And so it's really just something I think that the companies need to save as like a cover your bum kind of kind of thing. Um, so that that is the thing there. So um, yeah, I, I think that it the the danger. Um, it, it's really that you don't want to. I mean. Like I don't, I wash my dye, the things that I use for acid dyes by hand. Um, I could put them in the dishwasher. I don't think there would be a problem doing that. I mean, I use my kitchen counter, I use my stove, I use my sink. I just prefer to wash them by hand. And I think it just depends on with your own comfort level. And I mean, the Jacquard acid dyes on some of the bottles say that when they're in liquid, they're safe to use around children. Now, you wouldn't want your children drinking them, but you know, it's not something that's harmful if it gets on your skin necessarily. It's just whenever, and it's like a lab practice too. In a lab, and the reason why I don't use my microwave is that in lab, we had a microwave that was a non-food microwave that we use for things. Now, granted, we had stuff that might have had ethidium bromide and things in there that are actually bad that you don't want to touch, that you don't want to ingest. Um, and so, you know, there's a reason, reason for that, but I think that you know they're they're safe to use in your home. I think that it's just a it's just a precaution to use to to use equipment that isn't the same equipment that you eat with. And so it's really not. I did. I have one extra pot, and I got it um, that I use, and I have some extra utensils that I use with and containers for the for the non-food dyes. But otherwise, you know, it wasn't. It doesn't take up a ton of space, um, so it's not not a big problem. I'm just sort of skimming the conversation about this. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's better. Um, this is a good quote from one of you. I think it would be better to be cautious than wait for a bad outcome with acidites. Protection is recommended for your own safety. And so, yeah, it's, you know, you people can take the risks that, that you want. But if a company recommends to me to use de dedica dedicated dye equipment and to not use your food containers, I will listen to what they say. Um, and I think that when they're talking, the company is recommending techniques that are stovetop techniques and things that are kitchen, you know, they're recommending kitchen dyeing. I think they need to mention that you should use separate equipment um, because it's not food safe. And they don't want someone to decide, oh, hey, this color is great. You know, they don't, want, they don't want someone to try to use it then as a food coloring. Um, and so it's a way to, I think, keep the line between food and non-food for them as well. Um, aren't acid dyes actually toxic? I, I mean, I don't know about the, the studies that have been done on them. I mean, I think that in order for something to be shown to be food safe, there's a lot of studies that need to happen. And just because something isn't food safe doesn't necessarily mean that it's toxic. Now, inhaling powders can be bad, and so these acid dyes are irritants. Um, I don't know about the MSDS for the rest of the information, so I can't say about the toxicity from them. It's just, if you, you know, it's, it's prudent to wear a dust mask when you're gonna deal with the powders. It's probably prudent to do that when dealing with any kind of dust because you don't wanna inhale powders. It's bad for your lungs and can cause problems. So I think that a lot of the, the safety I use around dyeing is more common, common sense type stuff. Like if I got acid dyes on my hands, I wouldn't worry a ton. Um, but I, in general, try to wear gloves so that way I don't end up with some it's just a tiny bit of a black mark now from the, the sprinkles that I just used. Um, yeah, so now that you dye yarn, knit the blank and decorate it with stencil sprinkles. Ooh, yes, yes, you can. Um, yeah, I mean, I think with the sprinkles, with the sugar sprinkles, you could almost do them on a stencil to get a really cool pattern. I mean, certainly you could do an, a large pattern with the sugar sprinkles but they move around a bit when you wrap it up so that's something to concern um, that i would be concerned with but we'll see like how they migrated versus staying in their the respective areas with this yarn but i think it's gonna be fun um, um you're you're gonna get some of the shimmery dust for dyeing yarn you have no idea what's in it i mean oh, so i've heard that because uh, I looked at the silver color mist, and so that one has something like the food coloring is like red number, like red lake red number three or something that um, has some metal in it. But I think that it's something that doesn't really stay when you dye the yarn. So, but again, I, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> I haven't I haven't tried any of the specific like shimmery ones yet. Um, even inhaling food colors is dangerous. To, Oh, yes. No, I don't recommend inhaling anything. Don't inhale anything. Yes, teens can do really dumb stuff. I mean, I think for Kool-Aid, so the acid dye powder is a finer powder than the one from Kool-Aid. But at some point, like, if you can smell something, then it's in the air. And so, like, it's, you know, you could, if you're doing a lot, a lot, a lot of Kool-Aid, then it could be prudent to wear some things to just protect yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah, sock, socks are, socks would be really, it's funny, I haven't knit as many socks just because in general I don't really wear socks, and so that's my problem. I think that I would knit more socks if I liked wearing socks, but I'm usually barefoot. So, um, but I always see these sock patterns that I love, I'm just hesitant to make them because I know I probably won't use them. So I've made a lot more mittens over the years than socks. But, yeah, so um, I think that I am going to, there's some time on the timer, I think I'm going to take a quick little break, which um, might involve me muting this as well, um, but just for a brief break, and I'm going to send you guys to a commercial break, um, which will support this channel, and it's, it's stuff that I, I really appreciate you hanging tight through the break. And when I come back, we will dye some more yarn. So thank you for your support. And oh, 
And you can always use the, the little dollar sign on the chat, uh, Super Chat, to leave a little contribution to help fund more materials. That's another way that you can support this channel as well. But I will be right back. Whoops, wrong camera. <laughs> and I'm going to be going on mute for a little bit. Can you hear me now? Oh man, too many things, too many things. Um, hello, is that better? Because <laughs> uh, I think that I turned off the microphone on here. Well, this was good. This means that when I went on my little break that there was no, uh, <laughs> no sound, but I, I see the sound, so it should be working now. I don't know, I'm waiting for this to come through on the, on the live stream as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. No, it was muted. I was trying to figure out where it was muted. I was going through the control panels, but I did a double mute on myself. And so I'm glad that we're working again. Um, <laughs> so I think I want to do something that I haven't ever tried before. Um, and I think I want to try doing some sort of low immersion type technique um which i should go turn on the kettle to start heating up so actually i will be right back but oh you're late all right i'll give this is a good time for me to give a little recap too since i'm going to be heating up some water um oh shoot that's actually not even the best is that this tiniest burner yeah let's move you to a better burner oh wrong So I don't know if this is going to work, but I want to try using this new pan that I just got. And I know that uh, I could use this on a stove top to get, and it echoes, that's so funny. I could use this on a stove top and get, I just put some cork underneath it. Um, but since the stroll yarns absorb color so quickly, I think that I might be able to add hot water to the pan add a blank to it, and then add some Kool-Aid and maybe some sprinkles, and so we can play around with some low immersion. Now this pan 
is uh, just sort of like a, I think it's like what they use for catering. It's a full size one. It's about four inches deep. And what's kind of nice is the blank fits in it perfectly. It will need to be crinkled up because this is a third of the entire length. But if you remember one of the blanks I did on the first night where I did some low immersion dyeing and not necessarily trying with to get some speckles on it, but because it was crinkled up, it got some gorgeous, gorgeous patterns. So I wanted to sort of play around with that. The other thing I'm planning to play around with is the fact that there is no, um, there's currently no acid in the blank. And there's no black, there's gonna be no acid in the hot water that I'm heating up either. The acid will come from the food coloring, or sorry, from the Kool-Aid that I'm gonna to use to sort of speckle it. And yeah, but I think I might add a little bit of food coloring to here so that way maybe we get some bit of a base color um, but that might i need to figure out a little bit of my order of operations here um, i think maybe i'm going to add the warm water add a little bit of dye add the blank and then we'll start trying to speckle with it um, but that is the first we need to get the kettle heating up so that is my plan and I know that this would, I think that this would, might work better on a stovetop, but I want to try this out. Um, yeah, no, I, with the mute, I had muted, I had turned off the microphone on the laptop because one of the other times I thought I was muted, but there was still sound coming in at some point. So I muted it on, with the key on my computer, but I also muted within the streaming software that I'm using. And so, uh, when I came back and I tried turning on the microphone again for my webcam that's up there, I apparently also um, I apparently also just had it muted altogether. Um, so in the UK, first live watch, welcome, welcome. Um, so I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz, and this week we've been playing. I've been playing with a lot of different ways to dye sock blanks. Now sock blanks. Um, which I use to even refer to things that aren't made out of sock yarn, are pieces of fabric knit with yarn with the intent to dye them and then unravel them to turn them into another project. So it's a blank, sort of like a blank canvas. Um, and you can dye these in some really fun asymmetrical ways and things that are harder to achieve when you're dealing with, say, a circular skein of yarn. Because when, when you dye this, if you dye one section, right here, when it's not knit up, you will get uh, sort of a repeat of your color in the yarn, which is beautiful, awesome, and cool. But when you're doing with a blank, you can dye a stripe in one section, and it'll just be in one little area of the yarn, and it won't necessarily repeat. Um, so you can get these really amazing, asymmetric, unique gradients that you can't otherwise get. And so I have been using today, and in all the streams, a combination of homemade blanks that I made myself either with crocheting or on a knitting machine, and then also these commercial blanks like the Knit Picks Stroll Blank that I'm gonna use up there. And links to all of these are, a lot of these yarn bases are in the video description and they're affiliate links. So if you pick up some of the products and I get some credit and that's awesome, so thank you. Um, have I tried fabric chalk? No, is that something that's permanent? Or the fabric chalk that I have is just used for marking fabric and then it kind of disappears. For when I sew. So I haven't tried a fabric chalk that is like um, in terms of dyeing. I did, you know, when I do t-shirts I can use a washable kids marker and that will wash out. Last night it did not wash out. So something about the wool nylon, the washable marker, maybe the heat, maybe the vinegar, I don't know, something about that made it permanent. So I have, I'll have a little bit of blue specks in my otherwise perfect rainbow gradient. <laughs> But since it's a double-stranded blank, those blue specks will be in both of the identical skeins of yarn. So therefore, at least, like, it's identical. Um. <laughs> yeah, because if the fabric chalks are meant to wash out, exactly, if fabric chalks are meant to wash out because you're just marking the fabric to cut it, um, I mean, it might work for something like this to use when you want to wash it out. Um, as opposed to the washable markers. Um, oh, fabric chalk is permanent. Interesting. I've never heard of that before. 
um, I will have to look into that. Because I would imagine a lot of things that you can use to dye fabric, you could use to dye yarn. With the caveat that some fabric dyes, like for example, puppy paint is like stiff. And so if you're gonna pick uh, fabric dyes to use with yarn, you wanna make sure that um, it's something that will affect the texture of the yarn. So, yeah. But anyway, I think um, I'm really excited for this. Right now I'm waiting for my kettle to heat up. But I think, and some of the colors today are colors that I've mixed in other live streams. All of my liquid food colorings um, are, were some kind of Wilton's food color. They may have started off as some of the, the icing colors. They may have been from the Wilton Colorite system, which, oh, there's a $2 coupon on Amazon, on the US Amazon at least, for the Colorite system. Um, I have a link. It was already on sale, but now you can get another $2 off, which is awesome. Um, I don't get as much of a commission from Amazon stuff, but I do get some, so. Uh, oh, she meant to dye crayons. Dye crayons, that's interesting. Oh, I've heard of those. Those have mixed, I think I saw those. Those have mixed reviews because I think it can be hard to, dot, draw, to draw on the shirts and stuff. And if it's hard to draw on a shirt, then it's going to be really, really hard to draw on the yarn. Um, if you, whoa, it's windy outside. Yes, if everything goes dark all of a sudden, that's probably because I have lost internet uh, or power, uh, which if I lose power, I definitely lose internet. But it is very, very windy and rainy right now, so a tree could go down in the neighborhood. Um, but if it goes dark for some other reason, I will come in the chat and let you guys know. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> the, I totally lost my train of thought. But, yeah, I think that, I think that this will be pretty fun. I, so I've got, oh, that's the, uh, the timer for the, the sprinkles. Let me go check on that. My other kettle is still heating up. Okay, let me peek at this. Okay, so I still, I'm kind of looking through the sides and I still see some sprinkles. Um, not that I expect them to all dissolve entirely, but I'm gonna go ahead and give our sprinkled yarn an additional 10 minutes in the steamer pot. Sometimes when I'm using the big sprinkles, I like to give some extra time so that way things can stay wet as long as possible and to give like a chance to um, pass on. Uh... Oh, I'll give a link to the pan. Um, you'll notice that it came with some dents, which, urgh. Um, <laughs> But Amazon customer service was really nice, and so they gave me some money back. Um, I'm gonna, I'm going to get the link to the pan right now. Uh, da, 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 da. And this is so all the links that I have are, um, as I've mentioned, affiliate links. We'll see if it lets me add it into the chat. If not, I will add it into the video description. Um, there is the pan. Um, sometimes uh, YouTube doesn't like, YouTube won't let any of you guys put links in chat, um, but sometimes it doesn't even let me put the links in chat, which is kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> but here is, since I'm, let's see if it'll let me do another link. So there's a link to the pan, and here is the nitpicks scroll link that I love. And yep, yeah, it did not let me add the scroll blank link. Um, sometimes it lets me add that in comments, sometimes it doesn't, and I don't, again, don't really have a lot of control over that. But, uh, yeah, I think that, um, the pan, I, you know, again, I haven't tried it yet, um, but it was, I think it was just a little over $20, um, and the dents in it are, you know, cosmetic, so it wasn't the end of the world, but uh, I figured it was a nice starting point to see about this working, and I know that, um, I don't think Little Bean is on now, but I know that she uses these pans, um, and I think she can keep three skeins of yarn at a time. Um, so I think the length is is pretty good for for stuff like that. Actually, I'm curious because you know I fit a blank in it, but I haven't tried seeing like the length. 
Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so, you know, for even, even using one skein, you would get some nice surface area if you were gonna try doing some speckling and stuff. So, uh, this is, so this yarn that, I, that I'm playing with, I kind of have on as a bit of a prop. I sort of did this sort of awesome, and my re-skein is goofy. Um, this broken speckled is sort of what I started in today's stream. And so it's something fun. Do you use the pan today? I'm about to use it right now. Um, my plan is to add some boiling water to the pan, add a little bit of food coloring, no acid yet, add the blank, sort of arrange it, and then add some Kool-Aid to speckle. And there's a couple things I'm curious with here. Um, I'm curious about doing a more low immersion speckling technique with Kool-Aid. I don't think I've done this in a pot before. Um, aha, I'm starting to boil. Um, excuse me. I'm actually going to turn that off for a second because I'm not quite ready for the water, but I know I'll, I'll heat it up again right before I'm ready to add it. Um, so I'm curious about using Kool-Aid as a low immersion technique, but I'm also curious about starting with no acid with the stroll base then having the acid come from the Kool-Aid that I'm speckling with. And so I'm like, will the dye suck up in interesting ways around the specks? You know, how, how will this sort of happen? And so I think it'll be really, really cool. Yes, at Nitpicks, the cotton yarn is on sale this month. Bummer. Um, I do think it would be cool to get um, some of the dishy yarn in like the gray bottles and over dye that with uh, some oh, like tie dye and stuff. But you know, in December, they had all of their bear yarn on sale, which was amazing for me. And so I stocked up. But um, I guess I do get I do get commission on nitpicks orders um, through my links, which um, but uh, I, you know, I'm an affiliate now with a few other yarn companies. But with nitpicks, I've been using their yarns for a way longer than I have been an affiliate. So uh, I really, really uh, support uh, the company and enjoy the yarns. But let's let's kind of come in and hopefully these gloves are dry esque. So I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna add some of this blue. Of course, I tried to show it at the laptop. I'm gonna add some of this blue that's left over from a lot of things. It's a deep blue with some reds and a bunch of shades in it. And I'm going to use this OXO um, spoon. Actually, I should grab a link to it for you guys. Um, OXO dusting wand. Here we go. It's for like sugar, flour, and stuff like that. But um, I think it'll be awesome for dyeing because it's got holes on one side and not the other. And so you won't have stuff coming out as you, uh, here's the dusting wand. Hopefully, yeah. So basically when I add the food color, the Kool-Aid to it, it won't start coming out right away. But we'll see if the Kool-Aid powder uh, will come out at all. So I have some here in a shaker. This is a comp. Oops, it's going everywhere. Um, it's actually stayed pretty dry. This is the same Kool-Aid from Dye Pop Weekly number one. Um, this is a combination of, oh cool, of grape and cherry Kool-Aid. And I'm sticking this in that baggie. And I do want to rinse off my hands. So I'm thinking about the order of operations here. Okay, I'm going to rinse off my hands. And dry them. So I'm not all cool be right now. I am going to go to my stroll blank, which the link to this blank is in the video description. So you can find it there. I have it. My is that the one to write? Yeah. And I'm going to open it up so that way I can semi quickly add it to here. I'm going to turn on 
my pot again. I'm not going to want to add a lot of water, but I'm adding. So I don't know the volume of food coming, but I'm adding a tiny bit of blue color here. Um, this should mix up with the, there we go. We've got our boiling water. I need an oven mitt. And so I don't want to add a ton because uh, I want the level to be pretty low. But what's funny is look at the way the food coloring is moving through that. That's pretty cool. I'm just going to kind of mix it up a little bit. Maybe I need to add more. Um, I want a low level of water but since the, the, the blank itself is cool. I want there to still be some heat. I suppose if I need to, I can move this onto a burner. This is kind of very, very experimental. Uh, okay, that's warm but not hot. I mean, clearly it's not that hot because I've got my fingers in here sort of applying this, but I wanted there to be some color in here beyond what I'm doing. It's warm. I can always add, maybe I'll add a tiny bit more water. Probably should have been doing this overheat, but okay, so that's kind of cool. You can see that the color, this blue, has not bound to the yarn yet. Um, and you can tell that because, whoa, that came out pretty fast. Um, whoa! That's kind of cool looking. If I turn it over, I just sort of tap. Interesting. So what I don't know is if this will leave specks on here. Or actually, this with this color on the background, this is very, very reminiscent to that first episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Um, so there I have lightly added some, and those look like we've specked. It's funny, where there's more water, you can kind of see it like dissolve down, but there we go. I'm getting a better hand on this wand. Sorry, sprinkles, you'll have to wait. Um, I am setting a timer just for myself, but it probably doesn't need all this time, but I think what I'm going for now is I want there to be more sort of at that end. Sort of a middle amount to there. And a really, really light amount through this top end. What's kind of cool is I can almost see the individual grains of the Kool-Aid fall out of this spoon. Um, so it's a little bit of a gradient, not a perfect one, but a little bit of a gradient. And I do want to add, so I guess I'm going to give this sort of a minute to like simmer. I mean, I do see some Kool-Aid sort of dissolving around there. How warm are we? It's warm. It's not hot, but it's definitely warm. Um, so I do want to add some of these other sprinkles though. I'm going to take off my gloves. Oh, now I can remove the, uh, the sprinkles, but cool. Cause you can see, um, there's definitely some like red pops of color and then there's a lot of grape. I wonder if there was more or less, I'm not sure what the mixture was. I just know it was a mixture of cherry and grape Kool-Aid. But here, um, oh, I turned the steamer off. Here is our sprinkly yarn that we did before. So we did spray on one side, then on the inside we had sprinkles. And so it's hard to know at this point if they've all dissolved or not just because I can only see ones that are not touching the yarn. But I do think I want to add some 
sprinkles to this. And I'm sort of debating on the color. Well, maybe let's go for the rainbow. But there's a lot more citric acid down on this one end than there is on the other. Um, of course, I'm coloring my hands here, but I've never done these sprinkles. I've done candy low immersion and like the, the candy hearts and stuff, but I haven't ever done these sprinkles like this. So I'm curious how this will turn out. And again, I could always go and give this some more heat uh, because, you know, and it might have helped to have had the, maybe I could have had the blank sort of pre-soaking in warm water as well. But so again, this blank had no vinegar in it at all. So the Kool-Aid, 100%, and 100% gave really cool speckles. Um, there's some places where the color is more splotched, but there are, oh, funny, I still have some sprinkles on my hand. There are absolutely, absolutely, absolutely spots of, like, the grape, just, like, very, very discreet, big specks on here, which is cool. Oh, there's even some of this that isn't even on the water. I am very curious what these sprinkles are going to do, but they seem, um, because these, I think the sugar sprinkles, I don't know if they would have worked as well. I mean, the sugar sprinkles are larger than the Kool-Aid, but I don't know if they would have landed and given us discrete specs. Maybe that's something that we'll play around with next. After we remove this one, we'll put the other, um, we'll do something else sort of like on in this pot if this works. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think it might be really cool. I do see some of the colors, like some of the blues and reds, they do seem to be dissolving onto the yarn. But I'm curious how it'll look different from hand painted. But so these are more substantial than the sugar sprinkles. So they won't necessarily dissolve as fast, which I think works in the yarn's favor. I mean, you can see the bright colors are getting more pastel. Um, sort of, I don't really want to move them very much, but I'm trying to move the water a bit. How, I mean, it's still very warm. I think if we just give it some, some time, we should get something. The problem is that, you know, I added warm water, but there's so little of it that the blank instantly cooled it off a lot. Um, I wish you guys, could see a bit a bit better um, but this is why this is why the recap videos I think are important um, because when I do the recap videos then you'll be able to see I'm going to show some of the in progress shots which gives a little better resolution and things like that um, maybe warm the pan in the oven first so the water stays excuse me stays hotter yeah that could help I think that I would I'm probably in the future going to be using this pan on the stove top itself uh, and so that way I can have the burners on so it's actually like heating um, as it's going. So this is medium heat. Like I can put my hand in it comfortably. There's no question that some of the color absorbed. And I think that if I was doing this with a non-superwash yarn or with an alpaca blend or something that absorbs color sooner, it wouldn't work to do it like this. I just didn't want to try to move the camera right now. So this was a lazy technique. But the other thing that I was thinking when I did this is that in some other, I know some other people will heat up their dye pot, remove it from the heat before they do the speckling and add the dye and let everything cool off in the pot, which is different from the way that I do it when I normally have the heat staying on. Um, how would you use the pan on the stove top? Yes, I would use it on top of two burners. On one side of my stove, I have two burners that are about the same size. You'd have to sometimes move it to get the heat to distribute before you start dyeing, but I think that it would probably work. Um, you drink hibiscus tea that has the dried petals. When you brew it, it starts off a deep purple. Um, when stirred, it turns into a deep magenta, but you wonder if it would dye yarn. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the most 
easy colors I think are to get that are to get from natural things are like yellows and browns and stuff. Um, if you watched my space dyeing with tea video, some of the really pretty pink herbal teas gave a warm brown color in the end. They looked pink at the beginning, but after I don't know if it's an oxidation or what, but after some time, the the pinks um, sort of turned more brown. Um, so that's something that I, I wonder with a lot of these uh, these different techniques. Uh, excuse me. That's funny. Um, but yeah, I think that this is something that I've been wanting to play with for a while. And so because I wanted to use this pen for the live stream, if it normally if something arrived dented, I would exchange it. But there wasn't a way to get one to me in time to use for this stream. And then I was like, well, I don't want to use the pan and then return it because they might not accept. They might try to claim it's user error versus like it arrived broken. So, um, but they did give me Amazon customer service is good about this whole thing. But let's go check on this and see how we're doing. Um, okay, I am definitely, definitely seeing some specs from the sprinkles. Um, I do, oh funny, there's like a, because of the, the folds, there's like a clear spot. Kind of wanted to poke that part in. I wonder how blue so I do, there is some blue that's not in here, but there's a lot, a lot of color. I'm trying to see how much, it's funny, there's a lot more, I don't know if you guys can tell. I see that there's a lot more blue down at one end than the other, which is because probably that there's a bit of a gradient of the acid. And so I'm sort of tilting this to allow more of the citric acid to go down to the other side to help things <laughs> absorb. But this is fun. The, the sprinkles definitely gave some specks of color. So I kind of want to try another low immersion type technique in a little bit. But I think with the other blank that I've had pre-soaking, this is the, uh, the, Cash Sock MCN uh, from Molta Dye For. I'm going ahead and I'm, oh, that was that other kind of, I'm going ahead and I'm pre soaking that in some vinegar. Um, because, you know, there'll be some citric acid in here when I remove this. But, ooh, maybe we'll do like a layer of sprinkles and then lay it down. Um, like, we'll empty this, add some water, do a layer of sprinkles. I could, you can see all these, the sprinkles are dissolving. And actually, I can, I should turn this so I can see the chat. Um, I can pick this up because it's not that hot. Uh, can you guys see the colored specks in here? I'm not sure if you can see that uh, we definitely have, now, how this, how much of this will wash out I don't, versus remain behind, I don't know, because there hasn't been a lot of heat. But there are definitely, definitely some multicolored specks that are remaining behind from these sprinkles. And this area actually looks really, really, really cool. So, all right, I actually have an idea because I guess there's two choices. I could take this out and put it in the steamer basket to help set everything that's going on, um, which actually might be the way to go. Or I could let this cool a little longer, remove it, and then wash it and see what remains. Um, so I'm curious what, I mean, if a lot of stuff washes out, I could always over dye it, so it's not a problem. But I'm curious what you guys would prefer. Should I try to steam this to make sure that all the color sets? Or should I, you know, we can hang out, we can wait a little longer for this to cool in the pot um, a tiny bit longer and then wash it and see if uh, things uh, rinse out. So 
Yeah, if you guys could vote in the chat, that would be great. So then I can know. Um, now I did see bake it, um, which I don't know if that comment came before or after I was asking you guys to steam it to be safe because you guys think it's pretty. Um, or for the sake of science, don't steam it. Yeah, so that's the, that's the conundrum. Um, I mean, I feel like this one, except for the amount of blue that I add at the beginning, um, that one, that might be a little harder to, to replicate, but I feel like I could replicate these. Oh, you steam it. Uh, okay, more people are in favor of steaming. Um, so I'll steam it. I'm sort of on the like not steaming side of it as well, but uh, yeah, I think we'll steam it and then we can explore, and another time we'll explore the lowest amount of heat that we can give. But this is really pretty, so. Um, but I guess I'm gonna have to transfer this into the steamer pot off camera because, uh, yeah, I don't really want to walk it across the floor, but it is really pretty. There's definitely still some specks from the sprinkles on here. Oh, I know what I can show you what I'll do. Okay. This is going to be how I do it. I'm sort of going to fold it in half this way. Whoa, cool. There's like specks of color on the bottom. And so I'm folding on in half and then I'm going to pick it up and sort of just place it in the basket like that, uh, ish. Whoop, into the basket, no plastic wrap, just into the basket, but I can turn the pot back on. Still pretty warm, so that should start steaming pretty quickly. Yeah, and so there is some warm, I mean, there's still some stuff in here. I am going to go ahead and just dump out this water so we can start on the next one. But yeah, I think that I want to try something like this again. But I think maybe I want to start off with, uh, so this is a double-stranded blank, and it should be maybe as long as the counter. Let me see. Got to take a closer look at it. Okay, so maybe I'll have it doubled in here. But maybe I want to, I think again, I'm going to add some warm water. And then I'm going to have it like on hand ready to go. But then I think I might add some sprinkles to the bottom, add it and then add some other sprinkles on top. Maybe that's what I'll do. Um, oh, you guys changed your mind? No steam? Could I put half in the steamer? Um, that would be hard because the other half would like have to hang out of the pot somehow. Um, so it is in the steamer. Um, now I see more team not to be. Okay, maybe this next one. Although, oh, okay, so the problem with not seeing the next one is that this is a blend that I have. I mean, it's a super wash. Oh, you guys can't see me. So the next one is a super, super wash, 80% super wash merino. 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Um, so this should work, you know, very similarly. I technically have not dyed it before, and I don't know if the cashmere uh, content might require more time or anything like that. Um, you would have voted sooner, but you're having problems commenting. Oh, no, no worries. Um, I should have, I forget about the lag, and so I, you know, I just sort of went for it. Um, I am debating Baiting with myself if I should get okay maybe I'll pre-soak um, I'm gonna pre-soak another stroll what ah I was like I knew I had one more down here okay. I've got another stroll blank I'm going to pre-soak it in some warm water, um, and I don't think I'm going to wait like a whole 20 minutes, but I'm going to wait for the top water to get warm before I pre-soak it. Um, well, actually, I suppose I can start wetting it now. So I'm going to let the pre-soak be warm, so that way when I add 
water to the pan again, it doesn't have um, as much of a temperature change. But I'll do a different color as the base color. Takes a while for my tap to get warm. <laughs> I mean, obviously it'll cool off as it's soaking, but at least it won't be cool, cool water. Oh, but I forgot. Um, okay, I think that this one, I'm not going to necessarily do the Kool-Aid. Although, actually, maybe I should do Kool-Aid, but I should do a different color. Huh. This is when debating with yourself gets hard. Okay, because you don't want, I don't want to get this wet. But I think I want to use a different color Kool-Aid. Uh, sort of tap it out. Okay, there might be some of these colors remaining, but I think I want to get a blue. I'm going to go for I'm going to use one packet of ice blue raspberry lemonade. Because I want to semi-repeat the technique that we just did. But so this is a nice blue color, but you know the powder actually looks pretty white. There's a lot less, it's not nearly as concentrated with food coloring as the grape and sherry, which are two of the most concentrated colors. Um, and I also think I want to add, <sighs> okay, so with the other one, all right. And then when we try the vinegar soaked one, then I'll add the sprinkles to the bottom because that's a double sided Okay, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one very similar way to the last one, but I'm going to try some of the black sugar sprinkles. I am going to add, um, I'm also going to add some color in advance and I'm not going to add anything to the pan beforehand. I mean, I'll add some overall color to the pan beforehand, but I'm not going to add sprinkles to the pan beforehand. I'll do that on one that's double sided. Um, Oh, thank you so much for the super chat, Heather's Happy Stitches. Thank you, thank you. Your, um, <laughs> the contribution helps. It helps fund all these materials. Um, <laughs> um, I, I appreciate it so, so much. Um, oh, I see. Oh, thank you, Beatles fan, Sonia, um, for, for promoting people to give um, some super chats. Yeah, the, the little dollar sign by the chat. And I understand that not everyone has anything to give. And again, um, I, I greatly appreciate uh, financial contributions, but I also appreciate comments on my videos, likes on my videos, watching my videos. Um, those things all help me as well. Um, so even if you can't, are unable to contribute right now, um, there are other ways of supporting me and watching the live stream and commenting on the live stream is a way of supporting me as well. So thank you, thank you everybody. Um, can I do a butterfly clip, a big, yes, you could put, oh, thank you, trips and fall, trip and falls. Oh, funny, I get it now. <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat. Um, uh, yes, you could do a big Ziploc in the steamer. Um, oh, oh, I see, to do a butter, you, to steam half of a blank. Yeah, you could do, you could do something, well, I mean, you could place your entire blank in a Ziploc bag in a steamer, and it would this in the steam. That's more the heat from the steam than than anything, anything else. Um, yes. No. I know many many of you have c contributed on other videos, so there's no um, uh, obligation. I know that uh, Beatles fan also contributed on another video, but so I. But I, I appreciate the, uh, the the support from you guys. Um, oh, I've never watched U University, and 
since I'm reading this out loud and the chat is a video, you and then um, E-W-E, like the, the sheep. Um, the podcast about yarns made from milks, um, so, corn, soy. I haven't tried dyeing any of those fibers, fibers yet. And I need to, that reminds me, I need to email the, the person back. I was reaching out to a company that sells some of these and um, he was going to sell me some of the, the yarns and I um, puttered out. Will I be doing another Kickstarter at some point? Um, I don't have any, well, I'm, I'm squatting, I'm sitting down. Um, I don't have any plans to do another Kickstarter yet. I mean, conceivably someday I will do another Kickstarter campaign. But right now I think I'm more likely to, once I have fulfilled the Die Cut Weekly obligations of the last Kickstarter, which would be when I hit episode 35, which I'm actually about to start filming probably next week, episode 35. I've already done like 36, 37, but I have a special project for 35 that I want to do. Um, after that, I will probably set up a Patreon account, um, which would be a way for people to sort of, that's a way that you can, it's sort of like a monthly contribution kind of thing that you can sign up for. And I'd have some bonuses. The other thing that I'm considering is setting up, what? Why did the bottom of that go blank? That is weird. Camera? What were you doing? Um, the other thing that I am planning to do is set up an Etsy shop to do occasional D staff sales. So once my level of hand dyed yarn gets really, really high, then I'll do, you know, occasional big shop updates. And so it'll be different than the Kickstarter, but the, it will still give everyone ways to get some yarn dyed by me. And I might offer some video sponsorships again through Etsy if I, if that's something that would be allowed by their terms of service. So, um, I have not unraveled any of the blanks from this soft web special weekend. I am in the process of filming and editing recaps so that way you can see the sort of like in progress. I'll talk about how I dyed the blank, show the dry finished blank. Um, and I'm going to do one of those recaps for each of the, the five dying live streams. Oh, thank you, Luna Zola. Thank you for the super chat. And that heart emoji is also really, really cute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, oh yeah, no, the Ziploc bag to contain, with the butterfly clip to contain the yarn outside the pot could be a way to keep it protected so it wouldn't hit the stove. That's a, that's a nice idea. Um, sometime either this weekend, uh, I, I'm not sure timing wise, sometime this weekend, um, depending on when I get the other recaps done, I'm going to do an unravel a thon. And, you know, we're going to go through and unravel a bunch of the blanks. It might need to wait until next week. Um, it might need to wait until Tuesday or Wednesday when the kids are in school because then I'll have a big chunk of time. So I don't know how scheduled and advanced it will be, but um, I do plan to show the unraveling of these blanks so that way you can see. Um, Yes. Oh, I will let everybody know when I have the, the Etsy shop open. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, it's kind of like, you know, a lot. some of them have asked like, ooh, are you going to sell those Valentine's Day yarns at some point? And it's like, at some point, yep, probably. Um, some yarns like, you know, like this one I keep for myself because I don't have as much knitting time, but I, you know, I, maybe I'll like build up a collection so that way I can do a huge binder or like the fade, one of the fade shawls and stuff at some point. Um, wait, what's on? Oh, an unravelry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, maybe I should just call it the like frog it, the ribbit, ribbit section. Like I, I should have, add like a frog emoji or something to the, to the title. I don't know if you can add emojis to YouTube descriptions or YouTube titles, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, normally, so I have two Nitty Notties that, that I use to unravel, um, unravel double stranded blanks. And, you know, in theory, in the past, when I'm doing a pre-filmed video, I like to show, like film a section when it's on the Nitty Notty because then you really see the gradient a bit better then once it's taken off. But because these are involved in live streams, I think that what I will do is I will take a picture or a couple pictures of it on the skein, take it off, soak it, 
and see if, I don't know if I'll need some weight to help the king straighten out or if I just wet it and sort of shake it, if that'll be enough to help the yarn relax. So yeah, I think that that is something that, um, that I'll see, but I'm sorry. Oh, I was, I'm pre-soaking in warm water in the blank. And so that's what we've been sitting and thinking about. And um, okay, I think I am going to go get myself a quick snack because um, I'm a little hungry. <laughs> I'm going to grab a quick snack. I'm going to send you guys to a brief commercial break and then we will get started dyeing this next blank and doing one that I will not steam. So we'll start that shortly. And I need to see uh, the, like watching for my head to disappear so I know when to insert. I have it synced so that way I can insert the ad at like the right time. But popping in to grab a cheese stick. <laughs> And I know if you don't see an ad, don't worry. I know not everyone will see one every time with the YouTube algorithm, but I really appreciate you guys sticking through these breaks. Um, oh, there's a handy thing to do as I'm eating something. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. Almost done. <laughs> Sorry, I know that this isn't the most exciting stuff right now. Um. My tummy was starting to rumble, so I had a big snack before I started, but. I'm working through lunch, but it's the best because <laughs> you guys are the best and I'm having fun. I could have stopped, but, um, how long? Okay. I would be going two and a half hours. Oh, that's not bad. Maybe I can make this a record one. <laughs> um, when dyeing lace weight yarns, do you tend to stick with one color or tone so it doesn't get too busy? I haven't dyed lace weight yet, actually. Yeah, I've mostly done fingering. I tend to do a lot of lace work with fingering yarns, but I think when I buy lace, so I really like intricate lace projects. So if I, it depends on what you're gonna make. If I was gonna make, say, a garter stitch sort of wrap, I might be happy going for something wild. Um, but if I was gonna do a intricate lace project, I would try to go for a tonal, or like a kettle dyed yarn, a tonal yarn, maybe something that was subtly, like very subtle bro breaking, um, but I wouldn't want it to be too, too, too busy. But I've done a lot with, oh, what did I use? Was it like stroll? No, but that wasn't stroll. Oh, shadow. No, I've done some lace weight. So I've, I used some shadow tonal for some projects. Um, and I believe that they have the equivalent of lace uh, bear yarn with that, but I just haven't dyed a lot of lace. Um, I have, is the luminescence a lace weight silk that I have? Ooh, BFL and silk. So the silk, since silk um, absorbs color slower, then it might, you know, help you keep things like tonal. But yeah, I would, with lace, I would probably stick personally with more subtle things, but I know people do some wild stuff with lace and it can be really, really pretty. Um, check out some, look for some brands that do some really like variegated lace colors and look on, or look on Ravelry and see what people have done because sometimes that, that helps. Like one of my favorite things to do with really wildly variegated yarns is to do color work. I like to mix them with a solid and get like sort of a stained glass kind of feel to the color work. Um, so. I think it all depends on preference, but alrighty. So this still definitely has some like citric acid and stuff in it, but that's kind of like a fun little 
pattern there. Okay, maybe I can move it a bit forward. And oh, I definitely need to. This is what. Oh, I still have plenty of water in here, I think. I need to heat up my. Nope. Heat up my kettle again. And I am going to add. Um, I'm like debating on the color that I want to do as the backdrop. But I think. So this will probably be blue esque again. Now this one will be a bit more purple. So this has red number three, blue number one. Actually, I'm going to add all of it. This was the wastewater that I was um, rinsing my brush off in that I did at the very, very beginning. Um, so this had some, uh, it's a mixture of cornflower blue, violet, and burgundy. Um, all right. And then, yes, and my blank is warm this time. So that is good. Now let's move my, oh, my timer is about to go off. Let's move this with our Kool-Aid over. Um, I'm going to grab two bowls. One for the yarn that we are about to add, and one for my timer that's about to go off. So I'll just turn off the timer. So we have ooh, finished steaming our other yarn, and we definitely have some really cool rainbow stuff in there. And I'm curious. Yeah, the water underneath is still very clear. So, um, but so we steamed this yarn that we had dyed. Whoop! <laughs> the steam's going on the camera. In the way that we are about to dye this bike, just with slightly different colors. Um, you finally finished the sock you've been knitting. Yeah, post them. I can't wait to see. Can I put a picture of your dyed wool on my Facebook? Yes. Um, I can make the, on my Facebook page, you can share them on the Facebook page directly, but also if you search for the Chemnitz Lab group, the problem with posting a picture on my Facebook page directly is that I see it, but it's harder, it's not as visible to um, other people, but if you join the Chemnitz Lab group on Facebook, then you can share it with more people in the community. Um, okay, hot knit. On the floor. Okay. We've got our hot, hot water. Add a tiny bit to. Oh, I didn't pull out the. I think I'm mixing this up. I don't mind if there's some breaking and variation of color in here, but I thought that it would be a nice place to start by not having. Uh, see how okay this is warm this is warm oh we're definitely gonna have some breaking that's cool um i need more water i need more water um <laughs> which is funny because there well i guess there is a little acid in here because there was um yeah see look the reds are binding but the blues aren't which you can see as I add the really, really hot water. Um, okay, that's, now we're warm. Uh, just trying to poke it down without burning myself. La, 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 la. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool, actually, that we got that to happen. And now I've got my OXO wand. And again, as I get the feel for it, I'm going heavy. And I'm going to go try to go light up here near the top. But this is the only, except for what was residually in the pan before, the only source of acid that we've got. So I'm curious, because blues spread out more. So I'm curious, like, where we might see, like, we'll see, like, specks. Um, as this adds, if we'll see, oh, funny, did I run out? Oh, I ran out. 
I was going to try to add some more and I was like, why is nothing coming out? And that's because it was, it was gone. So that's how fast one, and this was just one packet of Kool-Aid. But ooh, we definitely have specs. Um, let me, I'm doing my method of zooming by taking a picture and showing it to you on my phone. And so you can see that there are some really, really, dis, like some of this hit and hit in a point so we see some specks of color. And this is hot this time, it's much warmer. But some of the others of it um, spread out a bit more. So this is cool and pretty. Okay, now I want to add, ooh, this is cool. I wanna add some of these black sprinkles. And I'm pouring them into my hand because I kind of want to do this in a little bit of control. Okay, those are actually like going down, like even in the deeper water, they are, I mean, I've got black on my hand now, but this is work, these are working, I, I wanna maybe try another color of the sugar sprinkles in a minute, but this is doing more than I had expected. And especially, look at my hands. That's a lot. That's actually a lot of food coloring. Um, I mean, I think that the low immersion is key, but man, that's actually really, really cool. I've got to rinse some of that color off my hands. Um, so this one I'm not going to see, which hopefully won't be too much of a shame. Where is my camera. So this is after I added some black. Um, just to kind of, I mean, I think there's a little bit of glare. So this is not the best picture, but there are some really discreet black specks going on in here. So we're getting sort of like a trifecta of chemnet stuff with like broken violet or broken Food coloring, speckles, sprinkles. Um, I know, I don't wanna do too much, but I do sort of wanna add some of the purple, because I'm curious. Okay, so you know what the difference is? These black sugar sprinkles, I think are larger. Because um, when I add these purple ones, they just are less, and I'm adding some to the rest as well. But let me kind of put some in my hand to compare the two. Okay, maybe size-wise they are similar. But the, the, the black are significantly more opaque than the purple and maybe it, that's just so that it can remain black otherwise it wouldn't really um sort of mix those over but the pink okay so the purple definitely will add like it added some specks of purple up in this area um oops that's a lot i didn't mean to get that much but it is way i think will be way more subtle than what we're seeing on the rest, the rest of here. Um, especially because of the, the color that we did on the backdrop. But um, I do think that we will get some, something from it. I think maybe if we were gonna go and use, say some of the bigger, um, like these bigger sprinkles, it would have a bigger effect. I'm tempted to keep adding more sprinkles to this, but I am not going to right now. I'm gonna let this cool um, because I think that we'll go wild with sprinkles again in a minute with the last uh, steam that we have. But I want to let this cool. And at some point, maybe I could add some more. Okay, we're still really warm. I don't wanna agitate it too much, but unlike last time, 
Um, this is hot. Um, yeah, this is a lot warmer, I think, than I was able to get it last time. I think pre-soaking the blank in warm water helped. This is gorgeous. Where's my, where's my phone? Oh, I can actually pick it up, but I'll try to bring it a little closer to you guys. But this is unbelievable. Sometimes taking risks pay off. Hopefully, let's see. Let me try to get in good frame so you guys can see sort of close up what's going on. Uh, but this is just cool. And it looks like, so I'm moving the water. I see the water is a bit cloudy, um, which ha tends to happen with uh, some of the Kool-Aid. And it definitely could probably use some more water down there. I think the areas that uh, the Oh, it's so funny that this echoes. So areas that are higher up out of the water get a bit more of the speckling than some of the areas that end up lower down. But I think that this is, is a pretty one. And there's other things that you could do too with this. Like with these speckles working really well, you don't necessarily need to go to the full on powder. Like I haven't opened up the powdered food colorings yet. And so, I mean, I did, you could put citric acid in a spoon and um, you could probably have pre-soaked in vinegar and maybe the like citric acid didn't make as huge of a deal, but it allowed some of the overall blue to end up all over. But you saw how even without uh, any acid, the, the pinks found really, really quickly. So I think having no acid in there meant that I could get a bigger spread just from adding the the, color, the yarn to the pot. I think that if there was acid already, we would have ended up with a lot. The pink would have struck in a much smaller area even. Um, um, oh man, let's see. I, I missed a lot of comments. Um, wait, so there's, can we do, oh, Making socks, it's a leg with everything. Cables aren't that hard. I don't think so. I mean, I've done a couple pairs of simple socks. Cables aren't hard. Lace isn't hard. Um, I think that, you know, if you keep notes of how many rows and stuff you do and you can keep your gauge consistent, I think socks can be totally fine. Um, if only there was a knitting machine for weaving in loose ends. Yes. Yes. If someone can invent that, I would be very, very happy. Um, takes you about three and a half weeks to make socks. So it's funny. It used to take me about a week to make a lace shawl. So I could use about, I don't know if it would be about 50 grams, between 50 and 100 grams of lace weight yarn. Um, I used to pre, when Chemnitz, pre-kids, when Chemnitz was my only responsibility, I got a lot more knitting done. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. So you never, there's a talk conversation. Um, you came in late. Are you using sprinkles to get speckles? Yes. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. So today the theme is sprinkles and speckles. And so I've been doing, I did some speckling. I started off doing some speckling very similar to this yarn where I used, um, where I speckled some yarn with some Wilton Violet. I did sort of a gradient of colors using a paintbrush and very, very, very concentrated food coloring, almost straight from the container. And then I w we played around using some of the sprays from last night and some sprinkles and sort of a random pattern. And now I've been playing with low immersion techniques using this big pan and some adding some really hot water to it. I would use this pan on the stove top, but I was a little too lazy to redo my setup today. So we did one and then we steamed it and now we're doing one and letting it cool in the pan. So I'm not planning on steaming this one so we can see how much of the color remains and how much washes out, which will kind of give it, but I, this will probably sit in the pan for a while, um, which will give us some information about the amount of heat needed. But so yes, I've been using sugar, sugar sprinkles and the Wilton black sprinkles have a lot of food coloring in them. Um, they look, you know, they are not, the, the, the violet ones feel almost like a little translucent. The black ones are opaque. They almost look like, 
chips of obsidian or something. They are dark. And I mean, you can see them from far away where you can't really see the violet ones necessarily. So it's, it's fun. Um, yeah, I'm really, really excited with this colorway. I think that um, it has the potential to do something really, really, really cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, but the Kevin's Lab group on Facebook is so much fun. Uh, I was looking for, because since some of the yarns are so like wrapped up, I can do like a little, a little recap. Here's like some of the, what is that? Oh, oh, okay. So I did this gradient of speckles, but here's sort of a close up of the way some of the speckles went, just with the tip of a paintbrush. Um, and so then the overall gradient, uh, which I think is going to be harder to see from the reflections on my phone, but, uh, you know, it was just, when we unravel this, we'll have little specks because these, these dots go across stitches. Um, and I love that you guys are sharing like patterns and stuff. Um, we did some random painting with sprinkles. I sprayed one half of this because this was a blank that was in the round. I sprayed one half with some Wilton's teal that was still in the Misto bottle. And then I added some sprinkles to it. Uh, and then the last like this blank and the other one, I sort of did a gradient of Kool-Aid using a oxo dusting wand. And I'm going to put the the link to the dusting wand in here again. I think that's the link to the dusting wand, at least, that I still have on my clipboard. Um, and so sort of added more of the Kool-Aid at one end than the other, so it's a gradient. But there's also, there was no other acid in here, so that gives this gradient of the citric acid as well. Um, I'm actually gonna move it, go move it around a bit. Um, unfortunately, uh, you guys can't, I don't think YouTube lets you add links into the video description or into the, the chat, but you can add links to, um, you can post links onto the comments Facebook page. So if you can't share something here, you can do that there. I'm now, so this is still warm, but it's cooling off. I'm sort of kind of making sure everything is underwater. Um, but a lot of these specs seem to be in place. I am impressed. Even the, you can't really see from up there, but I even do have some discrete specs from some of the, the violet uh, sprinkles. Those tend to be a little harder to show up on colors, but the black shows up even on the vibrant blue, so that's cool. I'm just sort of making sure that everything has access to some acid. And actually, and it looks like all the color has absorbed. Um, I think I'm tempted to put this in a, because uh, I want to do some more dyeing. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, it's still warm. So I don't wanna like wash it or anything yet, but I'm transferring it to a bowl and I'm gonna add some of this liquid on top of it. <laughs> As sort of a, you know, it's not in the, the pan is not hot or anything. It's, but it's just sort of a little, little way to stay a bit warm and not cool down too, too fast, but this yarn is gonna be amazing. Um, and I think that I don't, I'm not expecting, since the color's gonna start running when I pick it up, I'm not expecting a lot of the color to run when I rinse it. So, this shows how fast you can stain some of these yarns. So this has some citric acid in it still, which I'm gonna leave behind, I think. I've been pre-soaking a skein of yarn in vinegar. And I'm what I'm debating now, and so this is the, oh, I'll, I'll come and ask you guys. So the last skein that I have pre-soaked is the Wool to Die For, uh, I think they call it Cash Sock and MCN. Um, there's a link to that in the description. It's not an affiliate link, but um, it's something that I got as a three pack of individual skeins and it's something I made a, on the loops and thread machine, I made a double stranded blank of it. And so I'm tempted to add a bunch of the like non 
pearls um, to the bottom of the pan, put the blank sort of on top of it. But I, what I don't know is if I also want to like spray some color on it and then add sprinkles or what. So I'd love some suggestions of how I should dye this last blank. Do we want to play around more with this little immersion? Uh, should I hand paint it? So we've done like a, a lot of combination, but I definitely want to dye this yarn today. And I still have um, a reasonable amount of time left before I have to head out to get ready and clean up and pick up the kids. So um, I think, whoo, it's windy out there. I am amazed that I still have power. I feel like my neighborhood loses power all of the time. <laughs> Um, da, 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 da. Everybody's a bit of a delay. Uh, good evening and welcome. Um, welcome, welcome. Team sprinkles only, all the sprinkles. Okay, I like that idea. Well, we can go really, really big with the sprinkles. Um, Kool Aid as well, or um, really just all sprinkles, maybe just all sprinkles. That could be fun. Um, I do. Oh, unfortunately I have citric acid. I just don't know where. So clearly, however much citric acid is in one packet of Kool-Aid. Um, oh, thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Beatles fan Sonia for the contribution. Um, and I appreciate your support. Um, and support in the chat and everything. Thank you. Uh, the, yeah, okay, I think I'll just go with sprinkles, sprinkles, and more sprinkles, and we'll, we'll have some random wild fun adding a ton of sprinkles to this pan. Uh, what was I thinking? Oh, yeah, so the amount of uh, whatever the volume is in one packet of Kool-Aid, that is enough citric acid to dye yarn. So, okay, no Kool-Aid. All right, we're gonna go and we're gonna, I'll, I'll start with like a base layer of some sprinkles. Cause the, the thing with this blank is it's a double, it's a double, it's like made in the round. So it's not flat. And so I'd like there to be some color on the other side. Um, and, but yeah, we'll go, we'll go big. I'm gonna go big. You want sprinkles? Um, I think I'll start, I'll add some, uh, I'll, I'll go start heating up my, my pot. Um, you can't get Kool-Aid. Ah, so if you can't get Kool-Aid, a reasonable, and at some point I will measure how much liquid there is. So there is still some citric acid in here. I have pre-soaked this blank in vinegar already. Um, how much water is in? Oh, I need to add a lot more water to this. Actually, I'll add a tiny bit of the warm water here already. Um, just to keep things warm. The, so I need to measure, not that I know how much like, Kool-Aid there is, how much food coloring there is in a packet of Kool-Aid, but I think that you could do a reasonable approximation of Kool-Aid with sugar sprinkles plus mixed with some citric acid. Because however, I mean, I think that it's probably less than a tablespoon of citric acid that was in one packet. Um, just because I think the whole volume is less than a tablespoon. So I think that that's something to keep in mind. Drops. So thank you, Julia Martin. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate the contribution. Um, yeah, I'd sort of like to drop sprinkles inside the tube. I think that what I need to do and do I have another, I might, maybe I'll have another tube. I think what I would prefer to do if I was going to drop sprinkles inside the tube, because they can be pretty long, is that I would want to do it with a dry tube. I think wet, it would be a little hard to open it up, but I think it would be fun to try to drop sprinkles inside the tube while it's dry, sort of shake it up and then add it dry to the bath and kind of see what happens. That could be something that's fun to do at some point. Um, but I think that it would, it's harder it's harder to do when it's wet. Um, let me go see what else I have. So I've got, oh, and who knows? There, 
no promises. I mean, this is technically the last scheduled soft blank special dyeing video, but I still have some home. Well, I still have 10 knit picks, stroll blanks, and the link to those is in the video description if you want to pick up some of those. I still have 10 of those upstairs. Um, Oh boy, I mean, that means that I've died over 10 this week. <laughs> oh man. Um, so I have, this is, I've got this single stranded blank that I made on a Singer knitting machine made out of, this is the Galileo yarn. So this is 50% viscose. Um, I have, ah, this is an alpaca blend. This is imagination yarn, which is 50% merino, 25% super fine alpaca. 25% nylon. So this is one that I would definitely want to steam because we know that the nylon or not, that the alpaca takes more time. I have a single stranded blank of Andean treasure, which is 100% baby alpaca. And then I still have, because since I didn't really have a dip dyed theme, everything was a little more wild. I, I want to do, I think we're going to go for mermaid colors with like blues and greens and teals on this gray that I over dyed. But I'm thinking that I might do this on its own, own video. So it just it didn't fit that colorway that was suggested that I love the idea for. It didn't really fit with one of the themes well. Because I mean, I'd love to do sprinkles on this. I just think that the color is so saturated already that they might not show up very well. So yeah, so I still have those. And I have started a squish worsted flat blank that I'm about an inch into <laughs> on the loops and threads machine. Um, well, okay, so this, this die long week might end, and so the daily live streams might end, but you know I do live streams all the time, and I people want to do have more spinning videos, and so maybe I'll do another spinning series coming up, um, and I enjoy these dying live streams a lot, but every day is a little hard. Um, <laughs> Today I'm well rested, having the, the first two days, I mean, I think I was tired, I mean, I have fatigue issues anyway, but the first two days where I did the three hour live stream and then, um, what was it like 10 hours later did another three hour live stream. That was, that was physically difficult, um, for me, but I mean, I'm having fun. And so I wouldn't, I would have cut, you know, if I wasn't having fun, I would have stopped earlier today, for example. And I know that the live streams when they're long can be harder for people to rewatch as well. So that's why I, I try to do, and I plan to do these recaps because um, that way you can kind of like almost scroll through and see like the blank that you might want to see and go back a little bit. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have, I mean, I'm planning to have the pre-filmed episodes every week, but I think that, yeah, I might next time, there will be another soft blank special someday. I don't know if that'll be until the fall or something, but I'll do another big soft blank week. But I think I might build in some time into the live streaming schedule in that big week to do some unraveling. Because that was the thing. I was like, oh, I can hop on and do two live streams in a day. And I, I just wasn't, didn't have the stamina to do that. <laughs> I think that that was just a bit too much. Um, I got a little shout out to, to Wellesley with my little alumni water bottle that I got at Reunion. Um, got a nice little clip, which didn't fit on my stroller or anything, but it's still handy. Uh, yeah, the, the unraveling, I can't tell you how hard it is for me to have not just like while watching TV started unraveling some of these because I'm just really excited. I might, yeah, if I do, there's a chance. There's a chance that um, I might break things up, but I think on Tuesday I'm going to do a big unravel a fun. There's a chance that maybe sometime this weekend I might have some time and I might pop on to unravel the two crochet blanks, even though they weren't dyed in the same episode, um, just to have like a crochet blank unraveling live stream. But I'm still, I mean, I'll try to schedule the events ahead and share it on Facebook and stuff so that there's some time to, to plan around it. But it also might just be a random, I pop on live. And I can't believe I haven't played with these powdered food colorings yet. So for those of you that can't get Kool-Aid, try, you can make your own sugar crystal um, with other food colorings. You can make your own Wilton sugar sprinkles 
loose recipes on how to do that. And I'd love, you know, I plan to make some delphinium blue sprinkles and now corn flour blue sprinkles and royal blue sprinkles and stuff. Um, so that way that you can use. And so if you don't have Kool-Aid, mix those sugar sprinkles with some citric acid into something that you can sprinkle like and just have that mixture and then try sprinkling with that and you can probably get a similar effect than you get with the Kool-Aids. So I think that that would be fun. But it sounds like, all right, we are starting to heat up over here as I pull myself up. I think I'm gonna make sure to have the steamer basket ready to go because with the, when I don't know, since I've never dyed anything with cashmere before, I don't know if that is going to, um, I don't know if that's going to need more acid or anything for the colors to absorb. But that's the thing with all this learning process, right? Everything is a learning, <coughs> excuse me, everything is a learning process. And well, of course I bring this out and then do not really have a good spot for it. Because what I want to do, so I have this sort of arranged, I want to add some sprinkles to the bottom already, but my hands are wet. So okay, I'm going to turn off so we don't have the hissing. Okay. I'm going to go for it. Okay, got it quickly. Go fast. Go, 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 go. This is like, go team. Go, go, go. Because I don't want the colors to dissolve and mix together too much. So, uh, now this is no longer very warm, but you can see some of the colors coming through a bit. That's kind of cool. Um, there is vinegar in here. Okay, so I'm now adding some warm water. I am, I think, going to add some vinegar since I'm not adding the Kool-Aid this time. One. Okay, so there's pre-soaked in vinegar. There's a little citric acid behind. And as I need to, I'll add some more water for some Oh, shh. That was not good. That was not good. Did I? Oh, that was not good. No, it's one of the spoons of food coloring. Okay, I might have food coloring all over my shirt. Um, it'll be okay, Rebecca. It'll be okay. Um, where did that land on the floor? Actually, I think that I might. How could I have caught that and not gotten food coloring all over myself? All right, focus, focus. Ooh, I sort of like these purples that are coming out. Let's do some more rainbow. I'm going big. I said I was going to go big. I'm going big. All right. Um, whew, my hands are a little wet. That's why I'm... Let's do some of these. It's black. Whoa! That almost looks brown. That's cool. These are the, the violet ones that I think that the proportion of colors in some of these are very, very similar. Okay, you can't see this, but we're in my phone. You can't see this, but the sprinkles are looking, okay, good, I got a picture, are looking black. That is cool, or it's not black, they're looking green, they're like turning green. Uh, add some blue to those ends. I will need to add some more water at some point. Let's go. Some pink sugar. Purple sugar. Whoa, it's kind of cool. I almost see these lines because I think some of the sugar is like fallen in the stitches and that's just cool. And you see this black it's sort of coming up over there in a way that is also really cool. Yeah, I have no idea if the cashmere 
It's going to have things like adjust how things sort of spread out. So that's why I'm adding, sort of want some black in the, the rainbow. And I'm curious to see how much these colors spread out. Because here it looks like they're spreading far. Um, this I might have to take over to the stove. But we'll see. I mean, the worst case that happens <laughs> is that we get something that we don't love. Um, but you can always over dye, right? Let's add some green. I'm very curious. And um, let's do a little more rainbow. Oh, that was a, a blob. Okay. So I'm curious how warm, oh, this is hot. Okay, this is hot. And the water level is not super, super high. Um, trying to get the glare off. Okay. What you guys thinking? No green, I, added, I just added some green. Um, yeah, another blank. I'm the star of dying. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, yeah. I should go check the and see where. Because all of a sudden, you know those pockets? It looks like it's at the beginning. How did I get another on me? It, like, connected to me and then screwed to the floor. And somehow it all got, I don't see any screws going on myself. But I do have black food coloring all over my hands from those black sprinkles but I am so it's warm I don't want to shift things too much Whoa. so I am definitely seeing what's funny is that some of the sugar the way that the sugar is like dissolving I do see some discrete specks in the yarn um, I can't tell about those sprinkles right now. I do want to add, I'm going to heat up this, this water some more. But then I'm going to add a bit more vinegar just to be safe. Again, like this is the first cashmere blend I have ever dyed. So I'm not sure if it is one that will be more stubborn, like, what was that? Um, I'm not sure if it's one that will be more, a little more slow, like alpaca, or uh, if it'll behave like other superwash wools. So, okay. And now that we've given this some time, I'm going to add. Ooh, there's not very much water in here. Adding a little more water, especially to these and areas that might need some more volume. What's funny is that you see, there's, it's like that there was something shimmery in some of these, it's kind of coming up on the surface. Um, but clearly, you know, that can, okay, this is hot. I mean, this actually, for all I say, I'm gonna steam it, it might not need steam. Like now, this is not low immersion anymore, this is immersion now um so i'm gonna but I, I have, we have the steamer pot ready to go just in case but yeah it definitely adding that water made everything look a lot cloudier with the greens where where's the light the light is the bane of my existence uh trying to get some pictures of the in progress um, oh, wow. So I don't know if you can see over here, but whoa, those are some intense colors. Now, if they stay, that's the question. I mean, I definitely, definitely see some specks. Less, I mean, I don't know what's going on with the black. Maybe I see some specks in there. It's a little hard to know. Things are still sort of dissolving, but 
the water is hot at least. So, so there's that. Um, we've got something fun going on. I don't know what's going on. Excuse me. I don't know what's going on on the underside either. That's another another question. Um, you're going to do the steamer. Woo -woo. It's a, you don't have a steamer. Um, well, I think Europe and Canada. So I don't know if my steamer pot recommendation is going to be helpful for you, but this is the, my steamer pot that I use for, um, of course I search for, I should search for a quart. Um, I'm gonna share. This is this is the the Die Pot Weekly Pot. So the are you serious? Here we go. So it's a stainless steel four piece pasta cooker. And sometimes you can find these. At least down here, they sometimes have stuff like this at the second hand store. Which if I wasn't gonna be filming a lot of videos, I might have. Oh, Julia, thank you. Um, thank you for the other contribution. Did you? I think you gave a super chat earlier too, but thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Um, okay, so that link is my eight quart pot. And where's my carrot? Yeah, I just put the link for the, the steamer pot that I use in the, in the chat. Um, it comes with like a deep pasta basket, which I don't use. I liked it because it had a glass lid, so that way I could see through, and it had the shallow steamer pot basket but it was also a substantial pot, so there's a lot of space to do whatever I want to do in. Ideally, I kind of wanted a five quart pot with a steamer basket that sat on top, but this is working for my purposes pretty well. Um, and so, in, like, it, that is my non-food safe pot, which we were talking about earlier. So I could use that for some of these things, but then I wouldn't want to mix like my food safe dishes, and so it's. I will do some live streams with non-food safe stuff. It's just with this big a thon, I wanted to stick with um, my food safe equipment since I knew I would have minimal cleanup time in between days. Like I left a lot of the setup up each day, um, so I wanted to go through. The pan you're using could be used on the stove for steaming the yarn as well. Yes, um, some people will use those for steaming. Um, presumably you could even get like the catering set up and use the little gas can canisters to heat things on the counter. Um, I, I would, I plan to use this pan in other videos just on the stove top and have it on top of two burners at once. But I like the, it would be hard for me to move the setup because my cord to the camera that's up on the counter doesn't, won't reach to the stove from here. And so, yeah, with a cookie sheet. Oh, that's cool. I know you can buy lids for these, but using a cookie sheet or actually foil, foil would work really well um, for the top. Um, I'm going to grab a, actually, this might be a good time to do a really, really quick break. Um, I think I'm going to send you guys to a commercial really quick and I will be right back. I'm going to get some a beverage and stuff like that. So I will be back. I'm like watching for my face to disappear. Ooh, there's a bit of a lag. <laughs> so if you don't see it, you're hearing me like crack open up. And then I can press the button. That helps you. When you hear me chatting about adding the, the ads, then that's how you know about the the timing um and i appreciate you guys sticking through through these ad breaks i know that it can be annoying to have one in the middle of the stream but i try to not talk about anything important and do it while i'm taking a break anyway but that is one way that i support all this is with ad revenue so and yeah i'm not i i tried on I, I like coke zero and i've been trying some of these like twisted flavors I was disappointed by the ginger lime because it didn't really taste like much, but the, the mango tastes a little too much like mango. So I don't know. I wanted the lime one to be good. So yeah. 
no affiliation with Coca-Cola. Um, it's just I'm holding the can, so I figured I'd say what I was drinking. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Okay, I'm going to go up and check on the yarn. I wish in one of the, so YouTube has a couple different settings for going in, and one of them it tells you when the ad is playing and when it's done. And this one's not as much, so that's a little harder to know hmm. what's going on. Okay, so, all right, this is still warm, but comfortably, comfortably warm. What's funny is that there's still definitely some sugar sprinkles sort of like on the surface. There's like a film. I like that these turned pink. Well, funny, when I touch them, they sort of go. Let's. Yeah, you can see all that. Ooh, that. I think it's the pan. I'm curious. Oh, cool. So, you know, those those sprinkles that we added onto the bottom, we got we have some like modeling the speckling because they've already started to dissolve. Whoa, that black went all the way through. Um, this, is, this is nice, this is really cool. Um, I think that, I mean, it's still a bit warm in here. I am sort of mixing this up. I am gonna go put this in the steamer, I think. Um, I wanna make sure it has plenty of heat and, but we've got these gorgeous rainbow specks and blue specks and all different color specs, but I'm going to just go and transfer this into the steam pot and maybe we will, ooh, that's hot. The lid of my steamer is hot. Um, just, I don't, I want, I'm willing to take risks with one of them today, not, not both, but also look at all this other stuff that's in here. There's not a lot of color left, but it's sort of like with the candy, um, dying that I've done. There's just a lot of extra in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like running out of space to put things around the kitchen. So, oh, there are the ones that we did at the beginning. Okay, let me clean. Oh, so here's always the problem. I want to unwrap them because I want to show you guys but I don't think I'm going to be able to really do that because there's like Kool-Aid on the surface and a lot of sprinkles everywhere. So what I'm afraid of is because since everything still has vinegar in it, if I unwrap it now, if I unwrap the yarn now, what I risk doing is uh, like playing on some Kool-Aid and adding some other color to an otherwise like perfect speckled gradient. So that's why I'm like, I was like, ooh, I can unwrap it. And I was like, ooh, it's a lot, my workstation's a lot messier than it usually is right now. Um, so let's see. Um, oh, here, metal that's soaking two more skeins. Woohoo! Um, there's a lot of titanium dioxide and candy sprinkles. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I, you know, some of, the, some of these ones are new, but yeah, there's a lot of like filler and sprinkles for sure. Um, you just got on YouTube thinking that now that this was done, you'd watch it from the beginning and you're astonished that I'm still going. Yeah, um, it's a, this is a long one. And I was like looking and I was like, let's go for my longest ever. Yep, we're over three hours. So this is my longest stream ever. I will need to stop soon because I need to clean up and then pick up the kids from school. And unfortunately, I'm doing bedtime again tonight. Um, <laughs> which just means that, so normally, like I pick up the kids and I do dinner um, and I do all kinds of stuff. And then, um, okay, maybe I'll unwrap it like over here and hold it up because then it, I don't risk like hurting it. Um, I do wanna show uh, what things look like, but the, what was I saying? Um, oh, I'm doing bedtime. <laughs> So normally like I do, I do dinner and then keep as bedtime because that's like the most of the time that he, because otherwise if I did bedtime, then he would get almost no time with the kids. So the kids don't like, 
which means that since I rarely do bedtime, the kids don't like it when I do bedtime. So, yeah. But um, I need to figure out what we're going to do for dinner as well. Hmm. It's an icky. Oh, it's such an icky day out. All right, let me go grab. You know, he's about to replace it one and a half speed. Oh, man. <laughs> Okay, now I want to watch myself at one and a half speed and see. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, all right, let me grab. Let me grab. Oh, did I set a timer for my steamer? Um, maybe. Uh, da, 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 da. Problem is, I would turn around to the other side of the counter, but I'm just ugh, lacking. Lacking space. Okay, this one would be really easy for me to show. This one is going to be easy to show. As long as I turn my camera back on. I might get... Ah! Sorry, guys. Okay, so this is the one, the low immersion one that we did first. And, okay, this is wet, so this actually might not work as well. Um, Try not to spill water on my laptop. Okay, so this is the first low immersion one that I did. And what's cool about this, because we speckled with the food coloring on the back, I see some striping. Um, but so because it was crinkled, we've got this really cool pattern. Whoa, that's cool looking. Um, that's just like on the big patterns. So we've got more purple down at one end because I kind of sprinkled it on a gradient. But you can't get too much closer because I don't want to go over the laptop, but there are rainbow speckles on here as well. And so we did put this in the steamer. Um, suppose you want to replace it at 2x speed if you're low on time. I sound like a chick when you laugh at that speed. <laughs> I'm sure I sound like a chick when I'm going to make it really fast anyway because I'm sure I'm talking really, really fast like a chick. Yeah, okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That, that's for you replayers at double speed. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's steaming. That's good. That's good. Um, okay, I'll unwrap a bit of this over here. So this is the, the DIY speckles, so I can show off a little bit. But this is some of the cornflower blue. You can see how the, the speckles, I guess you're not really, not, at least I don't see the pink, um, but it's the darker areas are pink with a teal surrounding it. Um, and I'm getting, I'm not unwrapping all the way just in case there's, there's stuff, but where let's compare it to the, on the stroll, this is the, again, the same cornflower blue, but you can see that the color is spread out so much more on the Willow of the Andes than they did on the stroll. Um, so I think both will look really, really cool once we unravel. Sort of if you spread it out, spread some of the stitches out, you can get a sense of how small the specks will be because these specks go across multiple stitches. So they'll separate a lot more. Um, this live stream killed your battery on your phone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I have a lot of external batteries that I, that I use for a lot of stuff, but um, yeah, I think that this will, and so then the reason why I'm hesitant to unwrap this at all, all the way is that I see, I kind of want to unwrap it straight into a wash basin because I don't want to mix up if there's some food coloring left on the sort of plastic wrap. I don't want to contaminate anything, but I think that it's pretty special. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just, this is fun. Excuse me. This week has been so much fun. So let's think. On the first night we dyed four, or sorry, we dyed six. On the second night we did three, so that's nine. On the next night we dyed four, but really two, because two of them were dyed on the first string. So in terms of counting, so it's nine, that's 10, 11. And then today we did one, two, five. So 16 blanks, Woo! at least, unless I forgot any. 
What was yesterday? Oh no, I forgot the spray painted ones. I don't remember how many I did yesterday. So maybe like 20 blanks? Did I do three or four? No, I did four yesterday. So yeah, I think I did about 20 blanks. Did it spray paint? No. Did I miscount? I don't know. I did a lot. Um, the paintbrush buckles were fun. Yeah, that was, that was really, really fun. Um, yeah, I'm really excited because if you, let me see if I can show this better, but yeah, as I pull it apart, then like, you can think that they're just going to be teeny when I unravel it. So I think that it should be really, really interesting looking. Um, oh, you like hanging out here? So it means you don't have to go out and socialize. <laughs> hey, me too, right? <laughs> it's funny. I, I have a very bubbly outgoing personality. But I tend to be a bit of a, like, it's like I'm a, like a bit of an introvert almost that like I get, I get, you get really shy and stuff, which is funny that when you like see me in the video. And so if like, I think that if I were to meet some of you in person and show the dying, I would seem the same as I do now. But uh, it's, it's funny that I, I have these like, like two, two modes where I can be, oh, yeah. Um, but in general, I tend to be pretty like bubbly and energetic, <laughs> energetic I suppose. Um, time for a flash de stash sale. Yeah. No, I'm. I've been thinking about like the best the best way to to do it, and the thing that's been keeping me from doing it is like coming up with the name name for the Etsy shop, and then trying to figure out sales tax stuff, which in Massachusetts. I don't need to, in Massachusetts, there's no sales tax on yarn if it's yarn that can be made for clothing. And so therefore, all of the yarn, therefore, would not um, need to have a sales tax on it, I guess. But yeah, I, I, I just need to go and figure out like all the, the, the tax stuff before I do it and, um, and stuff like that. So do an online auction? I don't know about that. <laughs> Um, I mean, I guess I could put them on eBay or something, but I don't know, uh, I know some people do like auctions on Instagram, but I don't know about like the, I worry about rules and stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I think that like, I, what I will have to do is, uh, I'll, so for this one, um, I haven't like promised or like my thought is going forward if i do a patreon one of the rewards that i would offer is like early notice of like exactly when a dstash sale would happen um so that way like you get like first access i guess to it but yeah i i mean i i don't really know how how to set this up like i thought about trying to like set it up through facebook or something but i know that not everyone has facebook and um yeah, I, I just, I'm trying to figure out the best way to deal with it or to do like, you know, maybe do, if I do a live stream with, with some, with some of it as like a flash. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know the best way to, to do with all these things. So, um, yeah, we, we'll, we'll see. Um, so yes, I know you can have Etsy calculate tax for you, but you, so as the seller, you have to input the, the tax rate. So I need to figure out um, with things like, okay, am I required? And tax laws are such that like, I would only have to collect tax for Massachusetts residents. I think Etsy handles the tax for, I think they're in, I forget if they're in Oregon or Washington. They collect the tax uh, from that, deal with that or something. I don't know. I need to figure out how this all works because I need to figure out how to register in Massachusetts. So like if I, if I sell patterns and how to collect and and yeah, I, I just, I'm dealing with, with all, all that, figuring all that out, how to do it uh, properly and officially registering as like doing business as and stuff um, in my local area. And so, yeah, I, I'm working on all this other, other stuff to come together, but then oh, I can grab my, my soda. I'm hiding myself for a moment so I can reach up for it. Uh, <laughs> there I am. Uh, yeah, so I, I just need to figure out like the, the, the details of how to do things and um, 
Yeah. So I, but I do plan to, to figure, cause like right, right now, basically everything I do, everything I get paid from like ads and everything is paid to like me personally versus like as chemist. But if I start running a shop, then that's, well, I, yeah, I'm just figuring out how the best way to set everything, everything up. But again, like, you know, I'm planning to do, um, Um, I think that I would not do payment on live stream during super chat and then email me the mailing info. I think that that would be um, complicated. With income tax, though, I, I've got that set up. Like I, I pay, I have to pay self-employment tax and stuff on everything, but um, as well. But I've been I've been doing that for a while. Um, but yeah, I don't think I would do payment during. If I was going to do a live stream sale, I would like have people claim, send a PayPal invoice after um you know to, to someone's email and, and do it that way um using super chat i don't think that the it would be uh i don't think it would be kosher to use super chat as a way to pay for um like goods i know people do that to pay like we'll use super chat to do like oh i'll do something like i'll put a funny hat on my head if someone super chats or something but um, that has like a more immediate response. I don't think that there's like any seller protection um, to to figure figure out that way. Um, so no, it's more of just like I want to make sure I know what I need to collect sales tax on, who I need to collect sales tax from, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I don't know. I I think that uh, the reason why I'm leaning towards Etsy is just because of the organization of you know the versus having someone claim and having to collect their address and payment later. If I put all, even though it would be more work with photographing and stuff, um, then people can pick the things that, that they want and then I get the address all, all at once. And so, yeah, I just don't know if I still need my stamps.com account or if I, how Etsy shipping like, works out. So there's a lot to learn, but uh, my goal still is to focus more on making dyeing videos and spinning videos and stuff like that and have the, it really will be more of a de-stash. Now, depending on how things go, I don't know if there might be a couple things made to order that I might leave up during the rest of the time, but uh, I plan to, I don't want to shift to be running a, like an independent dye studio um, where my like full business is selling the yarn because I think that a lot of the fun, the most fun techniques that I do are a little more labor intensive and therefore wouldn't like be, if, if my goal was running a shop, it wouldn't be the best way to dye yarns for the shop. Like the homemade blanks are amazing, but it's not the most economical thing to do um, shop wise. So yeah, YouTube does take a cut of the super chat. Um, but, um, yeah, pay, PayPal invoices are better that you didn't know. Oh yeah. Um, yes, no, I, I, I am going to be asking little bean some more questions. She helped me get the webcam. Um, that's why I got this pan that I was using in today's video. Um, actually like what's funny is that like little bean and I have a friend in common and like we were at a wedding together many years ago. And so it's been, that's been something that's been, uh, I think is a fun, like it's a small world <laughs> kind of place. Um, but yeah, we, whew, we're doing these, um, yeah, with the, I, 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 I love making these videos. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, you have woolen dying just now. Woohoo! Yeah, I, I think that part of my favorite part is, oh, and the, I guess that's the other thing. If I was going to running a shop full time, showing you exactly how I do everything and how I mix my colors and everything, like I'm trying to encourage you to copy. Um, I'm, encur I'm trying to encourage you to do what I'm doing yourself. So, but I'm glad, happy to know that many of you would buy some of the yarn that I've dyed because that, you know, helps support support all this. That's why I needed to do the Kickstarter. So like, I need to buy more yarn and stuff. And it's getting, the Kickstarter was a nice way to do a de-stash the first time. But I think the only way I would do a Kickstarter is if there was like a big thing I needed to fundraise for, or if I had, I mean, 
I, I was still fulfilling the last Kickstarter, so I wasn't going to do it, but they had, I think in January, like a Make 100. And I was like, oh, it would be cool to like, to take advantage of one of the fun Kickstarter events and do something like, ooh, I'll do 100, you know, I don't know what I would do 100 of, but it would be fun to, to do something like that at some point. Um, but I think that's the, unless that there was something big like a, I don't know, like a book or something that I was trying to do, then that's when I would do a Kickstarter again versus something that would, something else. Um, yeah, so this is all, this is all fun. But I just enjoy also like the end of the videos, sitting and chatting, and that's why I like doing the, the Unravelings Live. It's, you know, not the most riveting television, and so, but, you know, you get to, I guess, see my reactions as I'm doing it and hear like a little bit of my thoughts as I'm doing it. And so I think that that's just, I don't know, handy. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, oh, hi, Little Bean. I was just talking about you. <laughs> so if you joined in, actually, with the lag, you might hear me mentioning you, um, which is funny. Um, but yeah, no, I was talking about how like you've been helping me with lots of questions and stuff with like stuff like the webcam and and all this all this stuff and how like as I'm setting up a, a shop and like pulling I might have some Etsy questions for you because I think I might use that for D staff sales. Um, <laughs> but it's funny I was literally just talking about you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that, I think that it's awesome. Uh, but yeah, check out Little Bean's shop. Her her yarns are gorgeous. Um, and so I'm, I was using, I used the new pan today to sort of like, I didn't quite you emulate your, maybe next time I'll try using some of these like powder two colors to emulate your speckling technique. But I did do some, some speckling in there with sprinkles and stuff. So um, yeah, with my new pan. Uh, so that, I think that that's really funny, but where, okay, that bowl, I need an empty bowl. Oh man, I have a lot of cleanup to do before I pick the kids up. I would never give a wide shot of my kitchen, but oh man. Okay, so this is the yarn. This is the homemade, this is the, the, Wool to Die For's uh, Cash Sock uh, MCN. This is that yarn that we did with just sprinkles, sprinkles, and more sprinkles. And so hopefully these colors will all stay. Um, I mean, we've got some awesome rainbow stuff going on. Those black, these black sprinkles really spread out a lot. So I'm curious like how things will be modeled and stuff as we wash it. but. That one we did steam as well, because I didn't know if the cashmere content would require more time, like the alpaca and silk steam too. Um, oh, you hear from me and you must, oh, I have to go check it out. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're really, really good. Um, yeah, Marie brought you up as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we, oh. Now you guys can't see because of my face. And I guess there's not a too lot to see with the steaming yarn there as well. <laughs> you know. But the yeah, we we did five links today with hand painted and um the 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 cash sock MECN is your go-to. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I I got it in a three-pack ages ago and I was just holding on to it, not knowing what to do with it. And so I made it into a blank. Um, on the, the loops and threads machine. And so then we, the vote was all the sprinkles. So we dyed it with all of the sprinkles. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a fun, um, that was one I was curious. Cause sometimes, so sometimes when I only have one skein of a base, my like, I hold on to it. Cause I'm like, I need to have like the perfect idea for this one. So it's hard for me to just go for it sometimes and and dye it because I'm like if I don't have a second one, you know, what if I get inspiration with it and want to do something else? I mean, I know I could go buy a ten pack or something, but um, 
How long should you steam 100% superwash with sprinkles? In general, I've been steaming most of these for 20 minutes, um, just because that's sort of my what I do. That's how long I did this one. And the other, the other sprinkles that I've done on the channel, I've either microwaved it for four or six minutes, four to six minutes. Oh, I guess one of the sprinkles that we hand painted, um, I did that for about 30 minutes just because I wanted to give it some extra time, but. Your crochet blink just reached four feet. Whoa. Um, yeah, no, I love, I love, love spackling stuff. I just, that's why I can't wait to unravel some of these, especially the spray painted ones. I know are just gonna be spec, 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 spec. They're gonna be spectacular. Ha ha. Like, where's Keith? He's my like pun guru. <laughs> but anyway, I probably, I probably do need to sign off because I need to clean up um, a bit before the kids come home since I will be the only adult to keep them from when we want to dye all the things. We want to dye all the yarn, not the children. <laughs> oh, but yeah, this was, this was fun and it's been an awesome week. And I still, I mean, I still have 10 soft blanks upstairs and I still have four homemade ones in my little box so there's gonna be more more soft blank content on the channel like that's not gonna stop um and no promises but i don't know you know the the official soft blank live streams are done there might be some more soon um there might you know i don't know but there'll definitely be some kind of unravel a thon sometime next week um because yes that needs to happen and i want you guys like that's the big reveal right you see the blanks but also like what do they look like when we open them up <laughs> okay you're a lord um with one arm like i can't, lucas and i had so many mommy home days and it was just the two of us and he's like oh do you want to dye some yarn he's like i only have one arm i can't do it with one arm and so um he's healing he's healing from a broken collarbone but yeah, he, he's fine. He's actually not in any discomfort anymore, but he's still like nervous to use the arm. But yeah. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm glad that you were dying along with me. That's that's awesome and makes it even more fun. And woohoo, I'm happy to have set my record for my longest live stream ever to date. Um, so now I guess like three, uh, three hours and 45 minutes will be the new, the new two beat on here. Um, but yeah, uh, I, it's always hard to sign off because I enjoy these little chats at the end, but again, I appreciate all of your support and thank you for all the super chats that you guys gave me today. That's awesome and helps, um, with all of this and yeah, I, I think I look forward to, oh, and I, whoops, I guess I didn't film any of the rates. <laughs> I was supposed to film some of the recaps today and I didn't. Um, I have one that I need to start editing, but I'll probably go and clean up and then go start editing some of these recaps. So that way, hopefully tomorrow I'll first get the first one. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I decided to add some more in. Like some of the, some of the stuff we did was just so fun that, uh, you know, I didn't have an end, an end point. And I am more energized today than I was on some of the other morning ones. So... <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for making this a great week. And actually, I think at four, in a couple hours, the ice dyeing soft blank episode, which you've already seen me unravel, that was done um, a couple, maybe last week or so. Um, so that that the ice dyeing video will be out in a couple hours. So if you're hankering for some more chemnitz after hanging out with me for so many hours, there will be a little more before the day is done. Um, but thank you, thank you so much for joining me and for your support. If you haven't subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, please subscribe. And I will be back in another live stream with, at the latest, probably Tuesday. So I will catch you guys soon. Aw, oh, thank you. I'm glad this is the best live stream ever. <laughs> oh, and I did not destroy any equipment, so we're good. <laughs> oh, but I should make sure the steamer pops off. I'll go, I'll go do that. But anyway, um, have a wonderful afternoon, a wonderful weekend. If you have snow, uh, have fun, stay warm, 
and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye everyone!